Good evening. We're ready to begin. The Planning Commission meeting is called to order. This meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. We're live on KCLV Channel 2, and this meeting will be broadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., the following Monday at midnight, Tuesday at 5 a.m., and Thursday at 6 p.m. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Chair Goins? Present. Vice Chair Trowbridge? Present. Commissioner Truesdale? Present. Commissioner Evans? Present. Commissioner Steinman? Present. Commissioner Dunham? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'd like to call your attention to the information printed in your agenda concerning our actions and the appeal and review process, if appropriate. Please read this carefully, and if you have any questions, staff is available. Also, the second page of the agenda contains our rules of conduct. We appreciate you adhering to these rules so we can have a smooth meeting. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the May 22, 2008 Planning Commission meeting and also the May 29th Planning Commission meeting workshop meeting agenda. So moved. Motion's on the floor. Please cast your vote. Yes, changes on that. Hold one moment. Commissioner Steinman? The, uh, the planning workshop one. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Dunham's name and my name got twisted on everything that's in there. So wherever Dunham appears, it should say Steinman. Okay, he agrees and understands agrees. that. We both read it. Okay. Okay, that's why I'd like to make that change on the workshop. Okay, make a motion to uh, correct the minutes as stated. Motions on the floor, please cast your vote with the amendment. And that motion has been approved. Okay. Let's move on to our housekeeping items. Are there any items that any of the commissioners, staff, or applicants or members of the public would like to pull forward for action? Mr. Chairman, um, items number 24, variance 27954. The applicant has requested this item be held in advance to the 710. 08 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 25, SDR 27953. The applicant has also requested the item be held in abeyance to the 710 Planning Commission team um, meeting. Excuse me. Item number 35, the applicant requests um, a site development review 28121. The applicant requests this item be held in abeyance to the 724 Planning Commission meeting. And item number 36, SDR 28133, the applicant has requested this item be withdrawn without prejudice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from any of the commissioners? If not, we'll take a motion on the abeyance, withdrawal, and request items. Moved as amended by staff's recommendation. Motion on the floor of approval. Please cast your vote. Commissioner Quinn, thank you. Thank you. That motion has passed. Moving on to our consent items. Consent items 6 through 9 are items considered routine by the Planning Commission and may be enacted by one motion. However, any item may be discussed if a commissioner, member, or applicant so desires. Any questions or comments on the consent agendas? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion for items number 6. Uh, Tentative map 28062, item number 7, tentative map 28099, uh, annexation 28046, annexation uh, 28048. Recommend for approval, subject to all staff uh, conditions. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Items 6 and 7 are final action. 8 and 9 go forward to council in ordinance form. <clears throat> Moving on to our one motion, one vote items. Those will be items 10 through 20. The following items um, are items that may be considered in one motion, one vote. They are considered routine, non-public, and public hearing items. All public hearing and non-public hearing items will be opened at one time. 
any person rep representing an on application or a member of the public or a member of the planning commission not in agreement with the conditions and all the standard conditions for the application recommended by staff should request to have their item removed from this part of the agenda. I'll read the items into the record. Uh, related items 10 through 12. Item 10, WVR 26389, Applicant Owner Wolf Creek Homeowners Association, waiver of Title 18.12.130 to allow Canyon Ranch Street to end at a dead-end street where a cul-de-sac is requested, generally located between Amber Station Avenue and De De Deloney Skies Avenue. Number 11, SUP 26823, for private streets within an existing residential development, generally located east of Jones Boulevard, approximately 660 feet north of Horse Drive. Item 12, VAC 26481, petition to vacate Amber Station Avenue, Soaring Hill Street, uh, Glen Mere Avenue, Chestnut Run Avenue, Dakota Trace Circle, and a portion of Canyon Ranch Street, generally located east of Jones Boulevard, 660 feet north of Horse Drive. Item 13, VAC 28087, Applicant Green Street Properties, Owner Southwest Desert Equities, LLC, Desert Hills Property, LLC, and Bryan Surgery, LLC, petition to vacate U.S. government patent easements generally located approximately 940 feet from the southeast corner of Deer Springs Way and Hualapai Way. Item 14, VAC 28094, Applicant Newland Communities, Owner Office District Parking, 1, LLC, and City Parkway <clears throat> 5, Inc., petition to vacate a 60-foot-wide drainage easement generally located on the Grand Central Parkway and Bonneville Avenue along the west side of the railroad right-of-way to Ogden Avenue. Item 15, RQR 28093, applicant Lamar Outdoor Advertising, owner Jermac LLC, require two-year review on an approved special use permit, SUP 2291, which out allowed a 65 foot high, 14 by 48 foot off premise sign billboard at 1851 North Rainbow Boulevard. Item 16, RQR 28128, applicant Dennis Hancock, owner Zygmunt Armardi, uh, required two year review on an approved special use permit, SUP 2203, which allowed an auto repair garage major and waivers to allow major repair and service work outside of an enclosed building to allow outdoor hoist and to not screen disabled or wrecked vehicles from surrounding properties and adjoining streets at 2101 Fremont Street. Item 17, RQR 28136, Applicant Clear Channel Outdoor Inc., owner U-Haul Real Estate Company, required two-year review on an approved special use permit, SUP 12936, to raise the height of an existing off-premise sign billboard to 30 feet above the height of the U.S. 95 freeway or 55 feet at 2021 West Bonanza. Item 18, SUP 27424, Applicant Cricket Communications, owner Nevada Power Company, for the proposed co-location of antennas and a 10-foot extension to an existing 60-foot tall wireless communication facility non-stealth design at 600 Northeastern. Item 19, SUP 28131, Applicant um, Yonatan Mabot, owner of the Junior Corporation for a proposed second-hand dealer at 806 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Item 20, SDR 28083, Applicant Owner Cox Communications LV Incorporated, request for a major amendment to an approved site development plan review for a 1,650 square foot expansion to an existing 1,637 square foot utility state installation at 2451 Ernest May Lane. Those are your one motion, one vote items. Any comments or questions? Mr. Chairman? Uh, staff has not received uh, condition confirmation forms for item number 17, RQR 28136, and item number 19, SUP 28131. Request that the applicants come up and accept the conditions. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's one motion, one vote. This, these are public hearing items. I'll open the public hearing at this time. Good evening, Rod Carter, 2880 Mead Avenue, on behalf of Clear Channel Outdoor. Okay. Uh, we concur with uh, all of the conditions that staff is recommending. Thank you. Right, Excuse item me on item number 17. 17. RQR 28136. That's correct. Thank you. Is the applicant here on item 19? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and pull item 19 and we'll hear it on its own merit. Okay? Mr. Chairman. Let me do it. You want to do it? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. 
just for the record, on item 14, that should be City Parkway 4 and not City, City oh, I'm, Parkway. I'm sorry, City Parkway 4. Okay. Yeah. Amend it. Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Steinman? I'd like to pull off uh, number 16, please. Okay, so we're going to pull item 16. Okay. Anybody like any more items pulled? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on the one motion, one vote. Items 10, 10 through 15, items 17, 18, and 20. Move to approve subject to all staff conditions. Motions on the floor. Please cast your vote. And those items have passed. Items 10 through 15, 17, and 18 will go to City Council on August 6th. And item 20 is final action in the absence of an appeal within 10 days to the office of the City Clerk. Okay. We'll go ahead and pull item 16. Is the applicant present? Staff? Item 16. While we're waiting, I'll go ahead and Sorry. read that in. Are you ready, staff? Sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, staff has confirmed compliance with all the conditions of approval from the approved special use permit, SB 2203, and the additional conditions placed on the subsequent required reviews of required review 6122. Uh, during a field inspection uh, and therefore is recommending approval. Thank you very much. Um, applicant? Um, Gary Gray, 1717 South 15th Street, uh, representing the applicant, Dennis Hancock. Okay. We'll go ahead and defer to Commissioner Steinman for questions. Then, because this is a public hearing, I'll go ahead and reopen that after his questions, and we'll, we'll see if there's any opposition or support on it. Um, Mr. Steinman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, we had a lot of trouble with this one two years ago. It took us a while to get approval finally. And I have to say I did not have an opportunity to go over there. It kind of bothers me that I didn't go over and look at it because I really knew what was going on two years ago. But I do notice in one of the pictures that there's still a sign out, front, out in front of this property that appears to be open with no that no uh, uh, signage in the sign and uh, I can't believe that that's permitted by the city to go on so that's one item and I and I must admit I did not get over there like I usually do <coughs> and it sort of bothers me because this was an issue the last time we had it, and that's why I brought it forward to see if we can learn anything more here I'd like the staff to talk about that sign if they would uh, if the city so desires, a sign not in use can be ordered to be removed. Uh, the, the applicant has a certain amount of time to reestablish the, the signage on it, uh, but it does require a notice and order from the code enforcement to do so. And if I may, just to add to that, that the RQR is on certain conditions of approval, and the field check that is shown in your staff report as having been conducted on May 23rd right. address the issues within the staff report. Um, the issue of the signage would be a separate matter that would be turned over to code enforcement separately rather than as part of this required review. Okay. Well, I think it should be turned over. Uh, we will certainly sure. do so. Mr. Okay. Simon, looks, it looks like it's eligible for the Neon Museum or something. Huh? I think it is. <laughs> I think it's reached that point. Put it in front of La Concha, everything will be fine. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the questions I had related to it. And I see that staff did say Oh, they're doing this and they're doing that, but we, we don't know. I don't know what's parked behind those uh, on that property in the way of uh, some of the sort of junk property that was vehicles that were there before, and and I guess it's my error for not going out, but I wanted to bring it up because it was such a, a tenuous issue the last time we had it before us. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience would like to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any more comments or commission comments from the board? Yeah, I had some comments on this. It Commissioner was, Dunham. I thought maybe it was time to maybe clean this area up. I mean, we're asking for uh, to allow or continue to allow major auto repair outside and to have uh, outdoor hoists. And I'm just wondering what, what uh, compelling evidence you've brought for us to continue this type of, of use when I really think that this area needs to be cleaned up some. Applicant through, I was yes, sir, Mr. Gray. Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to Commissioner Dunham. 
Uh, first, I should make it clear that while I've appeared before you from time to time, I'm doing this as pro bono simply because the applicant, Dennis Hancock, has been my mechanic for 20-some years, and I found him to be a, an excellent mechanic and honest, and therefore I wanted to help him out. Uh, let me try to answer a couple of questions. Mr. Hancock simply leases some portion of the rear of the building. The uh, sign in question out on uh, Fremont Avenue is belongs to the Vegas Tire and Accessories Company that is in the front of the building, uh, and Mr. Hancock has no control over what they would do there. Uh, I agree with you that it's unsightly, but it's not. It's beyond this person's the applicant's ability to control that. Uh, the question uh, Commissioner Dunham raised about the outside uh, hoist. Years ago, when Mr. Hancock signed a long-term lease for this property, it was being used as a major auto repair place with those hoists in place. After he signed the lease and took over, he was told that outdoor hoists are no longer allowed. Uh, he would have moved them inside, except the ceiling in the building is 10 feet high and could not accommodate uh, an inside lift. Uh, that was one of the issues that this planning commission did address a number of years ago. Uh, Mr. Hancock also took all the, uh, all the steps necessary to satisfy the other things that were in place when he first took over the building. He did not put concertina wire in. That wire was there. Uh, he did not take down any screening. There was no screening. Uh, when asked to do things, Mr. Hancock has responded uh, quickly uh, to meet whatever requirements there were. And uh, he's a small businessman that depends on this location. He's tied into a lease that he can't get out of. And so I would ask for you to accept the uh, recommendation of staff because Mr. Hancock has made every effort possible to uh, comply and, and staff has found him in compliance. Well, I do take your comments because I'm a neighbor and, and live close to there myself. I do take your comments to heart. Uh, mm -hmm. That whole area, I think, is being looked at by the city for some sort of a cleanup. Thank you. I just wanted to point out also that there was a field check done on May 23rd of, of 08 and uh, staff carried this field check out and made the following observations. Uh, there were actually four points. No repair work was occurring on vehicles located outside the rear of the screened area. There were only two lifts located just outside the garage bays. There was no razor wire uh, located on the surrounding fences, and the rear fences were outfitted to provide adequate screening from the public right of way. So, Mr. Chairman. There you go. Commissioner Dunham, any more <coughs> comments or questions? No, I think I'm good for now. Thank you. Commissioner Evans. Yes, thank you. The, uh, Mr. Hancock, if, if you'll, my colleagues will remember, complied with everything that we had asked of him. As much as I'd like to see this area become a Ritz-Carlton, um, I think an auto repair place, uh, uh, minor, and where he has cleaned it up would be sufficient for this time. And uh, we're asked to review the conditions that we imposed a couple of years ago he's met all those conditions and the staff is recommending approval. So I would like to follow their recommendation. My motion would be for approval. Motion on the floor uh, for I'd like to ask one question. Commissioner Steinman? One of the conditions says that the, the special use permit shall be reviewed in one year, final, at which time the city council may require cessation of the use. Now we're doing RQR uh, what does that, what is, is the special use still valid and is not a part of this now? We're just doing a required review at this point. If I may, Chairman, if, if the letter that's attached, which was the approval from 06, required that this special use permit would be reviewed in two years. So okay. that's where we are so right now. That's where we are today. We're in 08. This is the two-year review of the SUP, which was approved in 06. So we're getting one more year. Per and that short. condition would be for one more year. Now, if the commission... That's fine. Okay. That's good. We can get out there in one year. Okay. Not a problem. Thank there you. was a motion on the floor for approval, subject to all standard conditions through um, 
Commissioner Evans, please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. Thank and you, that goes forward thank to you. Council on August 6th. All right, thank we'll you. We'll pull item 19. Is the applicant here for item 19? Please come forward, sir. Staff? Staff finds that the proposed use meets all the special use permit requirements. Um, as stated by Title 19.04, therefore staff is recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you. Name and address for the record? Jonathan Labat, 806 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Okay. Would you like to tell us a little bit what, what you're requesting? Yeah. Are you in agreement with all the yes, standard I, conditions yes, and recommendations? Yes, I am, sir. Very good. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who wants to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or co from the commissioners? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 19. Make a motion to approve uh, item number 19, special use permit 28131, subject to all staff conditions. Motions on the floor for approval of item 19. Please cast your votes. Commissioner Steinman. And that motion has passed. And this goes forward to the City Council at their meeting of August 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to our public hearing items, starting with items 21 through 23, which are related items. Item 21, GPA 27296, Applicant Primac Family Companies, LLC, owner Michael Village, LLC, from L Low Density Residential to SC Service Commercial at the southwest corner of Lake Mead Boulevard in Michael Way. Item 22, ZON 27297, from RE Residential States under resolution of intent to RPD4, Residential Plan Development, four units per acre, to C1 Limited Commercial. Item 23, SDR 27298, for a proposed two-story, 20,000 square foot medical office clinic retail development. Okay. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, staff finds that the proposed general plan amendment and rezoning are not compatible with the surrounding residential property and recommends denial. As such, uh, the, the site plan review would also not be in conformance and recommends denial. Thank you. Applicant? Hello, Commissioners. My name is Brett Premack. I reside at 1000 North Green Valley Parkway, uh, Henderson, Nevada, 89074. And my name is Jordan Primack, 871 Coronado Center Drive, Suite 100, Henderson, Nevada, 89052. Thank you. Uh, thank you for meeting with us today regarding our proposed zone change. Now, this is the first time we're coming before you with this type of use. Our plan is to focus on this application and not a previous application for this property, nor future applications in the nearby neighborhood. Our meet after meeting with the neighbors multiple times, we understand their sensitivity to change in the neighborhood. Many neighbors expressed existing concerns regarding helicopters flying overhead, stores that are vacant, or even worse, errant trash from the local supermarkets. Our medical office project as designed is not likely to bring additional crime, trash, or significant traffic. It is designed to keep in flavor with the residential nat nature of its surroundings. Our proposal will bring employment and services to a neighborhood that does not currently have either within walking distance. How much fun is it to cross over I-95 freeway in traffic to see a doctor? What about traveling 10 to 15 miles round trip down Rancho to see a quick care physician? With gas prices over $4 a gallon, we feel that bringing services back to the neighborhood is more efficient and economical for the neighbors. I have to tell you, when I told my nine-year-old son, Austin, I was coming here tonight, um, his comment was, hey, Dad, do they know that this product's going to bring some jobs to the neighborhood? He says, make sure you tell them that tonight. And as a proud father, I smiled because he got it right. We want to bring skilled professions back to this neighborhood. We want to bring doctors, nurses, lab technicians into the neighborhood. One of our thoughts is that it may, maybe some of these professionals may decide to comm not commute to work anymore and decide to make uh, th this area their home. 
maybe become a future purchaser of the existing homes in the area. We feel that newer neighborhoods like Inspirata, built in Henderson, are getting it right. Live where you work. The history of this area, most homes were built in the 1960s. We understand that. The completion of I-95 together with a new exit at Lake Mead spurred community growth to the east, of, east and west of the freeway. In 1996, parcels along Lake Mead were annexed from the county into the city of Las Vegas. In 2001, Lake Mead was widened to 100 feet wide and added a stoplight at the corner of Lake Mead and Michael. Michael Way was then deemed to be an 80 foot wide road. So I asked, why would NDOT, the county, the city of Las Vegas, go through, this, go through the headache of developing freeway exits, annexations, SIDs, and build a 100 foot and an 80 foot wide road for future res residential homes to front onto? The fact is, this is, a, this is an infill parcel where the dynamics of this area are changing. We recognize that the area is not a new neighborhood. The neighbors in the city change the dynamics of this neighborhood on their own. Nothing that we're proposing will dramatically change what is already here. Currently, Lake Mead is 100 foot wide and, and Michael's 80 feet wide with a stoplight at the corner. Our project is, is designed to bring traffic off Lake Mead right in and right out. Our offsite improvements will include additional turn lanes onto Michael. This will, this will allow Michael traffic to follow more efficiently, to flow more efficiently. Our plan will use existing city infrastructure where it does not require city resources to install any new utilities, roads, or schools. We continue to believe that residential does not work, not because of the reduction of market pricing, but of a tremendous reduction in qualified demand. Who wants to buy a 500000 to even a million dollar house fronting or even backing onto Lake Mead Boulevard? In the hot market back in January 2006, we actually came before you and had, a, had, a, had this exact parcel zoned for 11 single family lots. But those lots were only 5,000 square feet each and our price point was $450,000. And we felt even back then it was gonna be a tough to achieve it in the hot market. We believe this process does not make sense anymore for residential use. The plan we proposed meets or exceeds all, all standards. We're not asking for any waivers. We're not asking for any variances. We've worked with staff to amend the site plan three times. We reviewed all conditions and agree with all conditions set forth. We have a two-story building that is 122 feet away from the property line, the residential property line, where only 102 feet was required. We have a one-story building, which is 146 feet from the residential property line, where only 72 feet is requ required. We pushed our buildings up against Lake Mead so they would not in any way interfere with existing residential homes. Our parking meets all the standards. Our lighting, we intend to have shielded from the neighbors per the condition uh, set forth by, by staff. We plan to build an eight-foot block wall to, to uh, block away from all, all, all the residential neighbors in the, in the community. We plan to install security cameras to, con to, uh, to uh, fix the concern for, for security in the area. We, we intend to install landscaping, intense landscaping along the residential property line as, as shown on our, on our uh, landscape plan. The elevation has a residential feel and a roof line is consistent with the surrounding homes. There are also two story, one of the questions came up regarding two stories. There's two stories on Michael, currently across the street from us. There are two stories on Shadow Mountain, across the street from us. There are also two stories across Lake Mead. There's also a two story looking style church right across from, from Shadow Mountain. We worked with our, tra our traffic engineer to address the issue of traffic. At Kimley Horn, they put together a quick study looking at what, what type of traffic this, this would, would create, this project would create. And they determined that 49 a.m. peak hour trips, 49 trips at a.m. peak hour and 74 trips in the p.m. peak hour. We then requested Kimley Horn work with the city traffic engineer to develop a traffic study. 
The city traffic engineer came back to us and said, there's not a traffic study being required by staff. It's not needed. He said before, at a previous application with another applicant, there was a discussion of a retail shopping center, which we're not, we're not proposing, that would have needed a traffic study. But they also made a couple other suggestions, which were okay to adhere to even here tonight, which is create a crash gate at Michael to create an emergency access off of Michael. They even considered putting a calming traffic median in that would help ease traffic on, onto Michael. At the neighborhood meeting, the neighbors did not express concern with the site plan as shown. We discussed the use as a commercial zoning. But the site plan as presented has not really been in question. After two neighborhood meetings, we've determined that our site plan for medical office is appropriate. However, when we met with the neighbors, they were looking at it as a C1 zoning. And tonight we come before you asking to reduce our proposal to an office zoning and an office land use. We, we listen to the neighbors. We've, we have talked to them and met with them multiple times. And we believe the site plan we're proposing with a 13,000 square foot two-story building uh, and a 7,000 square foot one-story building is the right plan for this site. The neighbors here tonight are scared of change. I don't blame them. But change has already happened. Change is going to continue to happen in this community. Leaving this parcel undeveloped would be a travesty. I close with, would you want an undeveloped weed growing parcel or a residential style office building that may end up being your family's physician, pediatrician, or OBGYN? Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> applicant. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. We'll allow two minutes to speak. May I show, uh, I have by a show of hand in the audience how many people are here on this item? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if, if anybody is wishing to speak, can they come down and yeah. line if up that going, way we can move yeah. through this? If you're going to speak tonight, we have two microphones. Please come down. Try not to be redundant. Uh, we'll set the clock at about two minutes. Uh, when you see it at yellow, that means you have about one minute to wrap things Where's up. Where's the clock? Uh, you'll see the lights in front of you <laughs> on the podium. They'll go from uh, green to yellow to red. Uh, commissioners, ma'am, ladies. Um, Name and address for the record. Uh, David Clark, 4950 Sawyer Avenue. The residents on Lake Mead and Curtis Park concur with staff's recommendation that this application be denied. It is incongruent with spot zoning for the contour of the neighborhood and what has been established before. We have met many times with uh, the commissioners over this issue, and we have met with the Premax. The Premax have offered to sell their property to the neighbors. Jordan Premax told me personally that we can buy it for $1,250,000 and make a park, and that would settle the whole deal. We do not have that kind of money. It was a residential zone when they purchased it. He clearly stated at our March meeting that the reason they are attempting this rezone is they cannot make a profit, a sufficient profit, with the market being at as what it is. Our position has not changed whether it is a C1 rezone or a professional. It must stay, in our view, residential. We live in a capitalist economy. If he paid too much for it, 600000 I think was the figure, and it is not feasible or inconducive to build houses at this time, you'll have to wait out the market like everybody else does, like I do. So we feel that we are trying to spare the erosion of our neighborhood. The yellow light's not on. If he wins this rezone, what we really fear is that we will see the domino effect as you see so many places in town, i.e. the yellow light along along Jones going, going south where you have spot zoning, uh, commercial, housing, commercial, housing, and pretty soon when those people leave or die, no one wants to live next door to a commercial building, and then slowly it erodes. You've, you've seen this pattern before. So we urge you to deny this application. I'm sorry that he may have to sell it for a loss or sell it to somebody who will build on it, but he hasn't tried yet. We don't know that. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies.
Mr. Clark, you yes, are saying you are opposed to his request to down zone to office as well? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mary Bundra, 5079 Sawyer Avenue, 89108. Um, I would just like to say that um, from being at the meeting the other night, the neighbors aren't just opposed to the commercial zoning, they are opposed to the office zoning as well. And um, personally speaking, I don't see that we're sensitive to change. It's just that we want to keep the community that we have and um, but my husband and I, our family moved in almost two years ago now, and what we really liked was that the neighbors care about each other and they all know each other, and um, they watch out for each other, and um, they help each other out. They want to make the community better. A lot of people have moved in and put significant um, time and effort into um, having their houses upgraded and and not um, fall, you know, to... Um, destruction or whatever and um, also you know there are skilled people who live in the neighborhood already there's a lot of professional people who live in the neighborhood so it's not a question that we need to bring more there are those people already there and, um, and the other thing is that um, people already have medical doctors and everything and I don't see them changing or they haven't nobody's expressed a need for that because there are a lot of medical facilities nearby us and people go to doctors they trust. I would even if I had to go a half hour to tell you the truth. So um, I just want to say that um, I personally am opposed to this and I feel that many of the neighbors are too for those reasons. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, my name is Ann McMillan. I live at 5353 Sawyer Avenue in Curtis Park. All of us have made investments. Some of them turn out very well and some of them don't. I'm sure a lot of you made investments in the dot-com. Maybe you made some money and maybe you didn't. The same thing applies. This is a capitalistic society. All right. The Premax bought this property at the high end of the housing market and it was zoned by the previous owners to be from RE to a low density housing. And the plan, because I saw it, were townhouses and they were for sale approximately 275 to 300 was the proposal for those townhouses if they were going to be built. So when they bought the property, unfortunately the housing market took a turn for the worst. Okay, that is their problem. It is not, we can't go when we lose money in the stock market and find somebody, oh, to help me out with my investment. It's taken a downside. Unfortunately, they have you to go to for that. That's not the way things should work in this society, okay? We take our lumps, whether they're good or bad. And if they were willing to go with the low-density housing that you passed, by the way, for the previous owners, I'm sure we probably wouldn't have a problem with that. Those townhouses were going to have a street that either went out on Shadow Mountain or on Michael, not on Lake Mead. And they would not have a lot of traffic. And I am opposed to anything but low density housing on two acres. In fact, it's a little less than two acres. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I'm Frank Bunder of 5079 Sawyer Avenue. I um, appreciate the commissioners who came out and took the time the other day to hear what was going on with the residents do very much appreciate that. You have heard, because we've been down here many, many times, most of our feelings, so we won't repeat a lot of that, But because I believe that has been entered into the record from the past. But the one thing I don't want to point out tonight is the green light's not on, so I'm unlimited. Great. You're good. Uh, <coughs> thank you. <laughs> is the presentation, it's frustrating here, snippets taken somewhat out of context to try to twist things is what my feeling is, and that's been a complaint I've brought up before. Tonight, all of a sudden, we've been put, it's been being pushed for commercial, and then the gentleman suggests that, well, the neighbors don't really have a problem with the site plan. Well, just because the last meeting happened to focus on our frustration with commercial doesn't mean we were accepting of the professional. When he brought up something about the helicopters, that was a comment I brought up at the end of the last meeting, but that was totally pulled out of context. It was brought up to the fact of the crime when I brought up about the helicopters because of 
basically the police copter looking for people. I brought up the additional crime because the Albertsons having to close at 2 in the morning because of robberies and other such things. Our concern was the value of the homes going down as the commercial comes in. So it was a little frustrating to have it brought up as if we were worried about more helicopters. That wasn't the point. The point was the devaluing of the homes by throwing the commercial into this area. As I say, for the professional now to be thrown up at the last minute, I don't think is fair because the people have not been for it. And then to suggest things that maybe to try to pull at our heartstrings, that to drive 10 to 15 miles down Rancho to a doctor, I haven't had to drive halfway to Perum to a doctor in a while. 10 to 15 miles, I think I'd be somewhere well beyond McCarran Airport. And 10 to 15 miles north, I'd be somewhere up in, I believe, about Mount Charleston. Right. <laughs> but the presentation of how we say it is to say, well, look, at, it's not reality of how these things are being spun. And it's quite frustrating. Uh, one, I'm on yellow, so very quickly. There's professional. They're looking at it sounds like trying to get a professional um, a compromise. Down the street on Lake Mead, there's some professional that has sat undeveloped also. I'll yield you another 30 seconds oh. since you noticed the thank light you. wasn't on at the beginning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. There's professional down the street that people had rezoned. They did not develop it. So giving a professional or a commercial does not necessarily mean that it is going to be done. The other quick factor is that just because someone has a C1 and is demanding C1 pricing, then how would you expect for, for somebody to come in and try to develop it as residential? The gentlemen here are expecting C1 pricing. will settle for professional pricing for that land. I'm saying bring it back down to the price where it belongs at residential, and you may have a possibility of selling it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Jerry Golden. I reside at 5001 Sawyer Avenue. Uh, one of the big things that has not been brought up so far, so I won't bore you, is the congestion on Michael Way. It's basically a street as called a neighborhood street. Then you have Sawyer Avenue that I live on. I went out the other morning to get gas from my car at about 7.30, and you can believe what you want. But I decided to speed up and catch this guy, and or not catch him, but clock him. He turned on to Michael Way off of Lake Mead and was running seven, uh, 62 miles an hour. That's one factor. We have a tremendous problem with speeders coming through Sawyer and Michael Way. It's a cut-through street. The second thing is, the last time I was here, I explained to you that the city put in meters, lines across the road in Sawyer, to find out how fast the traffic was moving. And they have a zone of 70 and up and admitted to us that there were cars at 70 and up in a 25 zone on Sawyer Avenue. I would not say anything that's not truthful in this meeting. Now, considering that, his plan was wonderful. If it was on Lake Mead and Rainbow, Lake Mead and Decatur, we have high volume roads to handle it. I am telling you, Michael Way cannot handle it. It's a very congested road now, A, used by the people who live on it, and B, is a cut through. And that's where everything being said tonight, that's my issue. The safety of children, drivers, the people that live in the neighborhood, of raising the volume of traffic. So I am absolutely opposed to this. Thank, Thank you. you. Both office or limited commercial. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Sean Butter. I live at 1930 North Michael Way. I am speaking for a couple other neighbors who could not make it. They are, um, they do live in the city, not in the county. Um, a couple things. Uh, he brought up the traffic. The traffic is horrible. Uh, it's speeding. The car is speeding up and down. It's only a 25 mile per hour street, it's Michael Way. And I'll tell you, you guys could wipe out your budget probably if you had a couple of squad cars sitting there all day. Um, Empty buildings. That was one thing I wanted to bring up. We got office buildings right up the street, right off of um, uh, Lake Mead and Jones. They're sitting there empty, they, right behind Walgreens. They're completely empty, been built, they're brand new, and they can't fill them. Then across the street, it, we got, uh, uh, what's the name of that video store? Um, Blockbuster. Blockbuster. They just moved out. Um, across from them, in the same complex there, is uh, Hallmark. They moved out, and they still can't fill the the uh, tenant space that was the uh, uh, right next to Albertson's there. Um, 
I don't think that we have a need for any more of this kind of uh, commercial building in the area. Um, the crime is getting much worse there. Um, you've got a bunch of caring people in this neighborhood. Uh, you can see by the turnout. Um, we're trying to fight something because we see what's going on in our own neighborhoods. And I think we should listen to the caring people of the neighborhood. And uh, we're against anything other than residential on those properties that face and are dressed Michael Way and Shadow Mountain. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Hi. My name is William Dome. I live at 4924 West Lightning Boulevard. Um, in actuality, I've lived in that residence for 30 years, and um, I don't plan to move soon at any time. And it doesn't matter how many businesses, uh, how many professional buildings go in there. However, there are other people that may not have my feelings, and that's one of the concerns in the neighborhood. If, uh, if you allow the premix to build a commercial building on this lot, then other commercial buildings will follow. That's the number one concern we have in the neighborhood. Another thing, um, this is actually the fourth appearance that we've had in front of you folks. Um, three of them were obeyed, as you know. And uh, yet we stand committed and determined to let you know that we want this zoning to stay residential. And as you can see by the number of people that you polled already, we're here again today. And we want to thank you for letting us be here. Also, I want to thank those of you that were at the, uh, at the town meeting that we had or the community meeting. Thank you for being there. And you've heard these things addressed already so um, as um, the other concerns of course is increased traffic uh, if the businesses were to become vacant crime would increase in the neighborhood crime would increase not down the street now from us uh, into the four properties that uh, Sean was talking about but right across the street from us we worry about that um, real quickly if I can have just an extra minute here um, on the first meeting that we attended, we gave you a petition that had 73 signatures on that. And um, what prompted the question to uh, bring up this petition came from uh, Ricky Barlow and again from um, um, uh, uh, Susan Breiger. And Commissioner Breiger. I'm sorry? Commissioner Susan Breiger. Commissioner Breger. I'll indulge you some additional time. Oh. You're a 30-year resident. And oh, thank you. Between you and Ms. McMillan, I learned a whole lot about the neighborhood going back a number of years, so I, please. I appreciate that. And uh, anyway, their question was, um, there are seven vacant properties on Lake Mead. What would, you like, what, you and, what would you and the residents in that area like done with those vacant properties? I have 73 signatures here. And of those 73 signatures, they all say they want it to remain residential. I'd like to turn that in to you because you the question... You can submit that, but we do have it in our backups as yeah, well. Yeah, you do. You don't have the question. We wrote the question on the top. So if you'd like to include this... Please submit it to the clerk and she'll put it in for the record. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Well, there, is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to speak on this item for or against it? Before I close the public hearing, I'm going to do another poll. Those residents that are against this item, please raise your hands. Okay. Those residents that are for the item, okay. thank you. We'll close the public hearing. Applicant, you have an opportunity to rebut some of the comments from the neighbors. Thank you. <clears throat> Some of the issues that were brought up specifically about product which is up and down the street away from us by maybe a half a mile or so discussed vacancies in retail and perhaps vacancies in retail office. We're discussing not retail. We're discussing professional medical type officing. Secondly, I would like to discuss one thing that David Clark, I think his name is, um, brought up to me in the same discussion that he quoted earlier. When he and I chatted for about, I'm going to guess about 20 minutes, I didn't get my cell phone time to prove it, but we talked for at least 20 minutes 
the last time we spoke. Before that, we spoke for about half an hour. Uh, he actually, when I asked him a question, what would you suggest for us to do on this site, he actually suggested medical professional would probably be okay. So the same discussion that he quoted, I'm just telling you what was also said. With regards to traffic, again, as my son Brett mentioned to you, we are going to be a right in off of Lake Mead and a right out onto Lake Mead. We've complied with all of the requirements, no waivers, no variances. We also have no problem at all just putting a crash gate in on Michael. So it is not that we would be introducing intentionally, even accidentally, any additional traffic directly onto Michael. I don't know why people would turn on to Michael when they have an opportunity to go up and down Lake Mead, which is a faster street to begin with and also can handle more traffic. Again, we were told when we went to do a traffic study that we didn't need to do one because our impact was minimal on traffic. But again, our traffic will be generated, whatever that traffic is, onto Lake Mead. Excuse me. Do you have anything you want to cover? We ask respectfully that you consider our request to amend our proposal to OO. <laughs> and that's, I guess, all I have to say tonight, <laughs> hopefully. Great. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. We'll open it up to questions and comments from the board, but I've got one yeah. question I'd just like to, to ask right up front. Since you're, plan you're planning on developing this, correct? Correct. Yes. Then why is there a sign on the property right here that, as we speak that says, for sale, please call Brett Premat? We are, first of all, everything that we buy is always for sale. Secondly, we always develop, we always have development plans for everything we do, and we intend to build this. We will probably need to take on an additional partner, and that's why we have the for sale. We actually are in escrow right now with a joint venture partner. And the reason we're in escrow is it will be, if, if we get this approved, we will be building it in conjunction with this joint venture partner. But it would be a separate entity. So there would be a sale that would take place. My son is a licensed general contractor. I'm a retired general contractor. And my son will be the general contractor. Of course, I will be assisting him in building the project should we get this approval. Thank you. Comments or questions from the board? Mr. Dunham? Mr. Steinman? Yeah, I'll chime in here. Dunham? <clears throat> um, I've got to tell you, I know that this is a tough piece of property to develop. And uh, I grew up in this area. I've seen this area be paved. So I was out there before there was even paving west of this site. Um, what I'm going to say is not going to be popular with the residents is I think if you brought before us a, a plan for office that had a large buffer, landscape buffer, along the south property line, 25 feet, multiple large trees, on and on and on, I might and I'm going to tell you I might support an application for strictly office. But there's no way that I can support the site plan as it currently exists, even if you're down, going to down zone it to strictly office, with the amount of opposition that these people have mounted. And these people mount this opposition every time. It doesn't... It, I think I think the more you ask, the more people they get involved. So that just shows you the backbone that they have. But I, I, I've just got to say I can't support this tonight. So, mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Dunn, um, if you look at our site plan as it is shown now, there's a landscape plan, and it's intended that there's, I believe, 24-inch box trees already lining the entire residential southern property. I saw that. I saw that. But in my mind, it needs to be at least 25 feet wide with double rows of trees, offsets, you know, park cut trees so that you have, um, so that for um, security reasons, you can, you can buy certain trees cut a certain way so that you have low shrubs and tall trees and then that middle section is, is not covered. There's, there's all kinds of ideas that I have, but this site plan doesn't address that and I don't want to get into 
trying to redesign the site plan tonight by saying, okay, well, we'll give you the 25 feet, then we get into reduction in parking, which means you have to apply for a variance or reduce the building sizes. Right. It's just not going to happen tonight. I don't even want to go there. So as the site plan exists tonight, even with, even though you're down zoning it per se to office, it's going to be I'm not going to be able to support it. So, but I do appreciate the efforts that you put forth in meeting with these people. Uh, I did attend that meeting. Um, I kind of thought it was unproductive. We had gotten way off the point of the meeting, uh, and it went on for probably another hour after I left, with still no resolve. So, but again, I do appreciate you holding the meetings, and I think. I think there's a compromise in there somewhere, but it's just going to take it's going to take a lot more effort on both sides. On both sides, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman Trowbridge, the uh, it takes a lot to get me to go against the recommendation of the planning staff. It also takes me probably even more to get me to go against the overwhelming opposition of the neighbors. I think that it was pointed out that this particular pro proposal as presented certainly is undeniable spot, spot zoning and from the input from the residents it's incompatible with the with the neighborhood. I'm not, not going to support the request either. Any more commissioners like to comment? Okay. Mr. Steinman? Uh, when I first saw this project before it even came here uh, with the two gentlemen at the podium I thought it was a good project. I thought it had some chance, and I knew the I knew the area. I mean, it's not that I'd never gone over and looked, but I didn't I didn't really like the zoning the way it was, and they've offered a down zoning in essence tonight. But what I didn't know at that time was that we had a community that's so actively against this situation. And they have been here repeatedly and told to go home repeatedly. And here they are, they're back again. And so I have to have a lot of respect for those people that live real close to this project. And, and, and that's the part that's making me change my mind where I originally was. Um, I, I'm not sure I understand this Christgate on Michael Way, I, I don't think that makes a lot of sense, but even if you want to head with it, I think you need access out there. Putting them in and out of one place doesn't make a lot of sense to me in any site that you develop. But I'm going to yield to the to the residents on this because I feel they're very strong and they really have made a case relative to this, that this being an island within their residential area. Yeah, they're on Lake Mead. That's a tough street. They're all around Lake Mead. It's a tough. It's a tough road. But uh, I know Michael Way does possess some of the characteristics that they talked about because they've been over there three times now. And yeah, those people are there that are speeding up and down that street. Now I don't think a project like like this will slow them down or make them go away, but it might add a couple extra speeders. I'm not really worried about that part of it. I'm worried about the intrusion of the commercial now into your neighborhood. And I'm not going to support it either for that reason. Mr. Truesdale? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank the neighbors. Last night they did come out. There were several of them. They, they made comments. I, I, like Commissioner Dunham, believe it could have been more productive on both sides. But I understand the neighbors' desires not to have this project in their backyard at this point in time and, and respect that. But I, I think we need to and I don't want to beat this horse to death, but infill and these infill parcels being vacant is one of the reasons we continually see development moving farther out. And the more we move development farther out and have these infill parcels go fallow, we put a burden on our community to make bigger roads to carry more traffic from there to here and that affects existing neighborhoods like yours. So, I, and, and I appreciate where you're at. Uh, but as a community, we, we need to start finding a way to better address the neighbors and address uh, land use needs so we, we fill these infill parcels in appropriately as they face on major arterials 
etc. Uh, I would have liked to see the neighbors talk about certain things, the traffic calming. Whether, whether you like this or not, if traffic is the biggest burden in your neighborhood, I think traffic calming on Michael Way could be a benefit to your neighborhood. Uh, narrowing throat with a entry island. Those are things that help your neighborhood keep the speeds down. The people on Sawyer, if you've got people driving on that street at 70 miles an hour, um, if they're not your neighbors and you can't speak to them, then you need to work with uh, staff to, to try and come up with some traffic calming measures to make your streets safe. Uh, for the developers, I th you know, you ha own the property, you have the right to bring projects forward, and I would never, ever criticize a developer for making a proper application and, and doing, you've ha held several meetings. But it's obvious the neighbors have monumental objections to the project as it sits. Um, I looked at other areas where successful office has been integrated in parcels similar to this and very successfully and very positively to the value of the neighbors and the value of, of re adjacent property owners as, on a residential basis. Prime example is uh, the Quail Park developments along Rancho. Uh, here, they've, they've been successful and the residential around there has proved very beneficial. But the project before us, like Commissioner uh, Steinman and, and Commissioner Dunham, is not something that I can support with the opposition the way it, it sits. I, I think if this was uh, office of a single story nature and, and and you outlined the traffic calming issues, I think still not saying I would support it, but I think there's there's other ways to address this. Uh, I do have a concern for the neighbors that this won't <coughs> be residential anytime soon. It may just be a vacant lot for a period of time. And contrary to whether you made a good investment or didn't make an investment, I, I could care less. But this being vacant and just being a, a fenced lot doesn't help the residential values in that area. Uh, it, it, it isn't a, a long-term solution for your neighborhood as a whole. So, But based on this, I, I will follow staff's recommendations. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Abbott, any comments? Commissioner Quinn? Any comments? Uh, I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Primack, for inviting me to the meeting. I could not attend. Um, and um, I've lived here my entire life, and I've never seen a support of a neighborhood such as this. And when you have people gather together in such abundance, not once, not twice, but three times, and at these neighborhood meetings, my heart has to go with them, and I will not be supporting your project tonight. Vice Chairman Trobert. I have a, a question for anybody in the audience. You keep saying Sawyer and Sailor. Which is it? Sawyer. Sawyer? Thank you. Just a couple of questions. I won't belabor the, belabor the point. I think everybody's, I'm on the same page with everybody, um, and Commissioner uh, Dunham and Truesdale as well, is I think this could work with office if it's designed right, but also if it's approved by the neighbors. And so I don't feel comfortable doing the down zoning right here at the podium. Uh, but one thing I, I do want to do is applaud the neighbors, and this is exactly how the process is supposed to work. And uh, neighbors um, expect the process to work, especially when we tell neighbors that have been in neighborhoods, and these folks, some of these folks have been here 30, 35 years. Um, there was one gentleman at the meeting that even had his daughter uh, that we talked about when Mr. Primack said, who wants a million-dollar house on Lake Mead? And the gentleman raised his hand and said his house fronts Lake Mead, and he raised four or five kids on Lake Mead, and his daughter moved back into the neighborhood two more blocks up on Lake Mead. So I, I think there are folks that b would probably buy a house that, that faces Lake, Lake Mead. But when we tell neighbors to get together, um, come to the meetings, um, Give us your true feelings, and we'll support those about your neighborhood, especially these neighbors that have lived in these neighborhoods that have developed 30 or 40 years. Um, I think we owe it to them to um, um, uphold their requests because they probably had plenty of opportunities when the market was going up and down to vacate those houses and move out when the big 
spy wave came in. But no, they stuck through it. Uh, they like their neighborhood. It's matured. Uh, they're going to stay there, and they've made their they've made their point very, very clear. And I'm going to have to uphold uh, their wishes. It doesn't matter to me whether they're in the county or the city. Um, they're there. They care about that neighborhood, and it shows right now how how they do it. So I'm going to have to support staff's recommendation. Uh, without any more questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion on item 21. In regards to item number 21, I'd make a motion for in general plan 27296 to support staff recommendation for denial. Motion on the floor on item 21 for denial. The yes vote is for the denial. Class, your vote. <coughs> item 22. In regards to item number 22, zoning 27297, make a recommendation to support staff's recommendation for denial. Motion on the floor for denial of item 22. Your yes vote is for the denial. Please cast your vote. That motion has passed. Item 23. In regards to item number 23, Site Development Review 27298, make a recommendation for uh, to support the staff's recommendation for denial. Vote on the motion. Item 23, the yes vote is for the denial. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. And all matters do go forward to the City Council on August 6th. Thank you. And again, neighbors, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner, all of you to Washington because the system works. Thank you. You've got to figure it out. You mean Washington Boulevard? <laughs> oh, oh, I got it. Oh, okay. Right there. Uh, Commissioners, I need to um, ask for a motion to re call and re-vote on item 13. If I could have them to make resend a motion. the vote. To resend the vote on item 13. Make a motion to resend the vote on item number 23 and recall it. 13. 13. 13. 13. Please cast your vote. And that resend has been approved. Um, I'll read the item again and uh, Commissioner Dunham can put his uh, request on the record. VAC 28. 087, uh, applicant owner of Green Street Properties, owner of Southwest Desert Equities, LLC, Desert Hills Properties, LLC, and Brian Surgery, LLC, petition to vacate U.S. government patent easements generally located at 950, generally located approximately 940 feet from the southeast corner of Deer Springs Way and Awalapai Way. Commissioner Dunham? I need to abstain on this item as I have a financial interest with Green Street Properties and Open Contract and also have some invest investments with them. So old dopey me did not catch that the first time around. So okay, dopey. thank you very much. Okay. Then a motion's in order for item 23 or item 13, 13. rather. I keep trying to hurry us along. In regards to item number 13, vacation 28087, make a recommendation for approval subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of uh, one motion, one vote. Item 13, showing Commissioner Dunham abstaining. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed, showing Commissioner Dunham abstaining. And that goes forward to Council on August 6th. Back to our public hearing items. Item 26, SUP 27685, applicant owner LB VPS Nevada Centennial Hills LLC for a proposed 145,254 square foot convalescent care facility in an approved medical office commercial development at the northwest corner of Durango Drive and Grand Montecito Parkway. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, staff finds that the use to be compatible with the surrounding uses and recommends approval. Applicant? My name is Matt Connolly. I'm with Venture Corporation. Our address is uh, 125 East Sir Francis Drake Boulevard in Larksburg, California. And uh, Ron Portero. Ron Portero, 7958 Lookout Rock Circle, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm the uh, local project rep for the, the uh, company up there in San Francisco. Thank you. Chairman, Commissioners, we support staff's uh, recommendation, and uh, we feel that it's a, it's a good use for a a project that uh, is already zoned for medical. I'd just like to note that we did uh, have this meeting it was uh, scheduled for in May, and we elected to uh, continue that to have a neighborhood meeting to just let them know of the project. And we re we um, had a small attendance, and there was no opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Are you in agreement with all the conditions? Yes, we are. As listed? Yes. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience for or against this item? Please come forward at this time.
Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, I'll make a motion. Uh, regards to item or the special use permit 27685, make a recommendation for approval subject to all staff conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 26. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. That goes forward to council on August 6th. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Item 27, SDR 27314, applicant owner, Emerald Lake, Inc. et al. for a proposed 17,620 square foot retail development, including a 2,000 square foot medical office building with waiver to allow a 3.5 foot perimeter landscape buffer along a portion of the north property line where a 15 foot landscape buffer is required on the south side of Lake Mead Boulevard approximately 175 feet east of Martin Luther King Boulevard. Staff? Mr. Chairman, the proposed site development plan review has been revised since the 612 of 08 Planning Commission meeting and now reflects one story 10,425 square foot retail building and a two story 5,575 square foot medical and office building. Additionally, the on-site traffic circulation has been improved. Therefore, staff is recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Applicant? Yeah, Lynn Affleck, 4987 Idaho Avenue. Uh, here to answer any questions. I think we've done our homework. Okay. Thank you. Marcel is okay. And my lovely wife, Uzoma, is okay. Uh, we own as Emerald Lake Incorporated. At 9235 Hickam Avenue, Las Vegas, 89129. Thank you. Um, Mr. Affleck, can you yeah. take us through the site plan and show us uh, in that brief time that you held it what you, what you did? Yes, sir. Um, we had, uh, shall I compare the site plan that I had before or do you, you just... No, just talk through oh, this okay. one because we went we, through a we opened We opened this uh, circulation through here. We also opened the circulation through here. We also opened the circulation through here so that there's plenty of circulation. In the process, we lost nine parking spaces and uh, we, uh, we reduced the building by 1,600 square feet. So the building used to be longer up this way. And uh, so we've reduced the size of the building to be to to make the traffic count, uh, I mean the uh, parking space count match the square footage of the building. And there were other little. I've put uh, more parking right here and so forth. That that was just to accommodate uh, what we were doing. But basically, uh, I think that's it. What, what do we do with the fence on the north side? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have entered a, a, a special detail here, alternating uh, wrought iron fence, decorative wrought iron fence with the, uh, with the uh, split face block uh, as requested by the neighbor. So, so is, is that wrought iron I see, is that the only wrought iron that be on that gate or will it be every so many it's, feet? It's, yeah, no, it's repetitive. Repetitive down down the length of the uh, what is it every every sixteen feet every yeah. sixteen feet you will see wrought iron uh -huh. on the on the split block. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's that's the way what, we have it. What type is that? A type of um, I guess I'll get into that when I ask the questions. But my, my concern is the fact that over a period of time you see those wrought iron bars pulled out. And then people use those as a cut through to get to the shopping center. Is there a specific gauge of wrought yeah, iron you can use that can't be many, many pulled? Those are reinforced wrought iron. They are, um, I believe, they three quarters thick. I just did some work with them, and you can't pull them. Um, <laughs> you can't pull them. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak for or against this project? Please come forward. This development, I should say. There are two microphones, so please allow them. Please state your name and address for the record. We'll give you two minutes to add your comments. Thank you. Uh, Eddie Watson, 1624 uh, J Street. I'm five or six blocks from where this building has been built. Uh, I had about a two-hour statement that I wanted to make in favor of it, but the commissioners have already made it. This is a blank piece of land that's 
sits in the middle of our neighborhood that needs to be occupied. It's a beautiful building. Personally, I think he went way overboard in what he have done. I think he, he spent way too much money. Uh, his original plan was more than sufficient. And the fact that he has uh, the audacity to come into West Las Vegas and wants to build something brand new is so exciting. I cannot tell you how much. And he's not coming asking for tax breaks. He's not coming to where we got to give him half the land. He's not coming to where we got to move sidewalks in order to uh, take care of all these other people. Everybody can come in there. Uh, we had to do something in order to get them there. Here is somebody that's coming, that cares about the community, that has family in there. His kids goes not too far from where he's going to have, goes to school not too far from where he's building at. And, you know, I, look, I could talk about this thing all day, but the point was already made. We don't need a lot of empty lots sitting around uh, in our city. Thank you. Thank God you. God bless. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Robert White, and I live at uh, 1248 West Barlett Avenue, zip code 89106. Okay. And I think that's a good idea what they was doing, because I've been there for 38 years, and it's the first time somebody will come on that side, you know, to build something right there on that corner. And uh, I've seen the neighborhood grow from no streets, no lights, no sidewalk, to up to now, and I think that's a good idea for them to build right there on the corner. Now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to speak for or against this item? Seeing none. Yes. Just for the record, I've been there 30 years. 30 years, yes, sir. And got 40 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll close the public hearing. Uh, any comments by the applicant? Okay. Seeing none, we'll take comments or questions from the board. Mr. Truesdale. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to thank the applicant. Um, you address the concerns that I had with this site. I think uh, while it may not look like we, we want you to want your project there, we do. And I think what you've come back with and the change you made make it a, a, a much better project for the community. Mm -hmm. And like the gentleman, we don't need empty lots. We need good development. But we need to make sure that we, as a, as a commission here and as the city of Las Vegas, we we raise the bar for West Las Vegas, so we make these projects better and better each time so the community gets the benefit of all of this. So, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Any more questions or comments from the board? Seeing the none, we'll entertain a motion on item 27. Well, I, um, I think we – David, David, do you want to come – Okay, I was going to make a motion. I, I think we saw this project a couple of weeks ago. I think we were happy with the project. Yeah. We saw it last time. We were particularly impressed with the outpouring of support from your your customer base. Uh, I think I even commented that I wish you'd be successful so you could build your second store over in my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, our, our only concern was the traffic uh, circulation patterns of the parking. I think that you've done a good job of, of addressing that, even though it did cost a couple of parking spaces. Uh, it's a good trade-off. So having said that, I'd make a, a motion for approval of uh, Bayance 27685, subject to, uh, nope, that's not the one. Item 27. 27. Uh, site development 27314, subject to recommendation for approval, subject to all staff conditions. Motion's on the floor for approval. Please cast your votes. That motion has passed. And that will go forward to the City Council on August 6th. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. First, first medical plaza, I almost say I can't wait to get sick and it gets built and I can go. <laughs> <laughs> Item 28, ZON 28018, Applicant Blohas Development LP Owner um, Art Central South LLC uh, from R4 High Density Residential to R5 Apartment at the southwest corner of Utah Avenue and Casino Center Boulevard. Related item number 29, SDR 28017 for a 55 unit apartment complex with waivers of the downtown Centennial streetscape and architectural standards. Applicant, or pardon me, staff. Mr. Chairman, the proposed development facilitates the goals and policies of the neighborhood revitalization area while being consistent and compatible 
with the existing apartments and duplexes in the area. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of the site development plan review and the associated rezoning application. Thank you. Applicant? Yes, uh, Chairman and Commissioners, thank you. Um, we are a small... Uh, Name and address for the record? Yes, uh, Jim Torty from Blockhouse Development, 1600 National Avenue, San Diego, 92113. Uh, we, we have several parcels in this area. Um, we uh, believe that the South Casino Center has the uh, opportunity to become a, a nice uh, residential, uh, urban residential enclave, um, just by sheer nature of its uh, central location. And uh, this is a very efficient uh, economic uh, project, kind of uh, workforce housing with a designer edge to it, if you will. Um, system, systematic units, not highly amenitized, but centrally located, uh, nice units, and uh, well-developed apartments is how we see uh, some of the infill development of downtown uh, progressing, smaller infill units on sites scattered around that area. So that's our vision and uh, we um, appreciate and accept the conditions of staff's uh, recommendations and comply. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience for or against this item? Please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Truesdale. Uh, two comments. One, I do own property in the downtown area. It's outside the notice area. Uh, I don't think it affects my ability to vote on this item, and, uh, and I will vote on it. Questions I had, what type of units are you planning to build? Uh, you, uh, you talk about work for, what are these? Are they one bedroom, two bedrooms? Uh, uh, there's a, uh, on this particular one we have 54 units and we've emphasized the two bedroom units because we still have the economics and the challenge of the rents in the area. Um, two bedroom units, average size, uh, about um, 440 square feet to 1,000 square feet. So they're modern units, very uh, very um, clean, open, loft-type units, if you will. Um, and again, not very highly amenitized. We have a central courtyard, and we're trying to be, uh, again, very efficient and economical about the development itself so that it's feasible. Um, we're considering a uh, rooftop garden, and like I said, it's going to have a central uh, interior courtyard. But the units themselves, um, fairly small. Uh, more of the units are two-bedroom units than... Uh, one bedrooms. And this is over a one deck parking? Yes, sir. Right. And um, these are market rate, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Evans. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Evans. Um, in principle, I'm uh, very much supportive of new residential in there, and particularly I think you're proposing about a four story height. Yes, sir. Um, it sounds like the price points are appropriate and uh, I, I also believe that Casino Center can be or has the potential to be one of the greatest streets in our downtown. It's right in the heart of the Arts District and uh, my hope would be that it may be affordable enough for artists and people who work in that area to be able to live. Uh, I do have a couple of concerns though. The elevations that were submitted really don't tell me much about what it's going to look like and I, I just don't want any surprises and uh, unfortunately they just seem to be computer generated boxes um, and I'd really like to know what what the final product would be and lastly um, and maybe the staff can help here on item number 29 I believe there's you seeking a, uh, I believe a waiver from the uh, downtown Centennial streetscape and architectural standards, and I'm not real clear on on what that means. Um, I, I'm of the opinion that Casino Center, it's it's critical that that they have a treescape down there if they want a pedestrian orientation. If you want to have an arts district and you want to have a vibrant area, you're going to have to have trees along the Casino Center. It's my understanding that I believe up to Colorado the uh, they're putting them in, and I think the city is doing that on, I don't know whether it's both sides or one, but uh, it will take what is now a relatively barren era, era, area and, and make it pedestrian friendly. The waiver to the street state, streetscape standards, will that in any way uh, impact the rest of Casino Center? And my hope is that whatever your building will be somewhat seamless 
you know, like a continuation of that. Um, and either the staff or the applicant, if someone can address that, I certainly would appreciate it. I don't want to miss an opportunity here to, you know, to raise the bar down there. So, um, staff, you want to take a shot at that? Uh, each project would be considered on its own merits, so I, I can't uh, uh, answer how the streetscape will be affected along Casino Center at this time, other than that uh, staff does support the waivers. W just for the sake of argument, wouldn't it be, I mean, if we're, I think the city is actually paying for trees along Casino Center, and wouldn't it make sense that there would be a continuation of that as we continue to develop that area? It just seems silly that we'd have this beautiful treescape and then a block where we don't have it and then a block where we do. And mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I'm not really clear what it is that you're seeking. Are you not intending to put any? thing on this street or are you going to build out or well if I may commissioner um, one of the issues that we have there is a very tight context so we were not we don't have the room to sort of set back the buildings and create more uh, of that um, pedestrian friendly zone and we discussed it with staff we did talk about that because it's a quite a wide distance from the curb now uh, South Casino Center I understand that potentially the future may involve widening uh, the sidewalks and and um, uh, compressing the the street because it's a very wide street and they don't anticipate maybe a lot of traffic on that street at some point. If it does become the pedestrian enclave or the residential enclave that we, we sort of feel it will be, um, then, then I believe that's reasonable. So what we did do is we tried to cut back the corner and give that um, building setback, which was um, what we discussed with staff. I don't know that it was really a compromise, and, and there may be probably two separate issues. But as far as that amenity zone, there's just not enough room for us to do that, and it just doesn't. It, it impacts the project so dramatically that it makes it not feasible. I'm just wondering, as long as you meet ADA standards, um, I'm wondering why we can't, as a city, uh, do like other cities do, where we have a tree in the in the tree grate, and you know, as long as there's uh, ADA access. Mm -hmm. Um, y y it would be appropriate to put in the irrigation, you know, when you're doing the initial building and do all the infrastructure, because I don't think we'll ever get it. If you build the building and we don't have the streetscape, my worry is that in 30 years we're going to be saying, what a pity we didn't, you know, have some continuity and a seamless streetscape. Yes. And if there is anywhere in this city where we want a pedestrian orientation, it is Casino Center Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I'm perplexed that because I don't know what the final result will be, and I think in the in the long term, uh, putting in the trees. I'm not looking for you know a berm and a and a huge setback, but uh, I think it appropriate that you put in the trees there, and it could be an incredibly attractive boulevard at some point. Mm -hmm. And I have to applaud our city because I, you know, people sometimes laugh at me about my whole thing with the trees um, but I'm I'm absolutely committed the fact that the trees help clean the air and in particularly in a downtown um, if we want people to walk our streets and we want them to go from cafe to coffee place to antique store to art gallery you, you're not going to have that happen in July or August or June when it's a hundred and 47 degrees out. You've got to have the trees. And and I've quoted this many, many times in the past. Uh, when I first came on this commission, I started doing some research into air quality and the effects of, of trees and et cetera. One of the problems with our valley, the way we've grown, is that we've created heat islands. And with all the asphalt and all the concrete and not paying attention countywide, to the tree canopies and and uh, the the average nighttime temperature of our city uh, as of eight years ago was has been raised ten degrees from ten years prior. That's a substantial temperature change, and uh, with that comes. So anyway, I'm. How do we how do we resolve this? How do we allow you to build what you need to build and still have some sort of continuity and meet the, I think, the broader long-term goals of the city. 
particularly for that area. Thank you. I don't, I don't have the answer to your question, but I, but I do have an opinion to express. You know, you, you're a builder in San Diego. I lived in San Diego a long time. I, I don't think you'd get away with putting in 55 units downtown San Diego with one, on less than a half an acre. You know, I think when you come here with a request with a, with a straight face, you realize, hey, this is a pretty good deal. Uh, realizing that, I think that we've had other apartment complexes here that are really and truly not aesthetically too pleasing. Mm -hmm. And I really and truly, when I see the renderings that were submitted, I'm not overly impressed with the artistic presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we're trying to create an artsy district downtown, and this does give the real strong feeling of being just a, a box uh, with the uh, outside stairwells facing the street. That's, mm -hmm. that's not an attractive presentation whatsoever. And while I would support you having 55 uh, units on a half acre, I'd like to see a more attractive uh, presentation. It could be done architecturally. It could be done with additional landscaping. But I think it, uh, it could use some, some enhancements. Yeah, and, and I believe, and I, I respect the comment, I appreciate that. We had done, uh, the renderings don't pr probably adequately reflect the setback, and we stepping back on windows, and you have glass, combination of glass and stucco and other materials that would make it quite interesting, actually. So I don't know if those really come across here in this uh, rendering, and I appreciate that they don't, but um, our sensibility is a, a more modern sensibility, and like I said, we have a sister project on the north uh, side at 1111, 1115 and 1121 South Casino Center called Art House, and they have they have a similar sensibility that we're calling this one Esquire. Um, however, we we will play on the Arts District theme. We will use murals, central lobby uh, facade, and sort of emphasize the lobby entrance area and do some of those things. We have some ideas. Um, it, the the challenge the challenge that we face, and you mentioned the number of units, really has to do with making that work as a rental scenario, and we're, we're struggling with that right now. But we believe that that's what's needed. Workforce housing is underserved in terms of that price point. It's not affordable housing. It's not subsidized housing. It's modern, efficient, artist-like. People working in the downtown area, government center, the Strip, and other places could easily locate, relocate to downtown and have pride of ownership with uh, products that are, I, I think, much more contemporary. So that's our, our overall vision, and I, I do agree that the renderings don't reflect the actual character and nature and quality that will come about when we do do the development. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Commissioner Steinman. Um, the downtown centennial standards for sidewalk is 10 feet wide with a 5-foot amenity strip. 15 feet, and we're going to take that down to 5. And I understand why you're doing it. You can get more units, more two-bedroom units on there. That's pretty simple. But if in the and this is an area that needs a lot of help. Yes, really a lot of help. And I'm glad to see some help is on its way. I'm concerned that the next person on the next block comes in, and they put in 10-foot sidewalks and five-foot amenity strips to make it look like we want it to look because that's the standards, and it doesn't match up. And I'm really saying what Commissioner Evans said. He says it much more eloquently than I do relative to the trees and everything. But he's, uh, he's right on target. We, we're going to get different, lo different blocks looking different. And it's, gonna, it's just going to not be a pretty picture in 10 years. And so I think there's a movement here on your part to really build more than our downtown centennial standards allow. With build, you, if you had to do build more on the site, yeah, you can get get more on at five feet than you can giving up fifteen feet. Well, can I address that because I think it's yeah, I like this like important. Your, you know, the 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 driving component of these developments is the parking, and we've we've seen that in downtown context in San Diego, and we believe it's going to be an issue in Las Vegas as well. Uh, although much more liberal, uh, we could eliminate a lot of parking and step the building back and and be in a different situation, but I think that that's going to take away from a really a development that's feasible at this point. We've, we've got 54 units and 55 parking spaces. In a downtown, tight, urban context, we believe that that's really important. You do believe that's important to have one-to-one? -one? Parking, yes. You do? It's a, at a minimum. And what's our required for this? The automatic application of parking standards does not come into play in the downtown Centennial Plan area. So the applicant has the opportunity to propose a project at a parking that they find 
to be uh, one that makes the project feasible. So they could provide no parking? It would have to be considered by the planning the commission and the council, but yes, they could yeah. make that application without the requirement for a variance. Well, you know, I want this project to go forward, and I, I know you're financing it conventionally. Yes, this is not subsidizing. I, I know that's not yet. the easiest thing in the world to do today, probably. It could be a little while before you get that accomplished, I'm sure. But I am really concerned that we do this in the next building applies strict standards and does what they're supposed to do. And Commissioner Evans was going the right direction. If we're going to do this, why can't we place some trees in the sidewalks like they do in the big cities, and I can, we're getting big enough mm -hmm. to, to require that, in the grates, however it has to be done, even though we're going to have a small area to do it in, at least have something there True. that helps with the look that we're trying to achieve. So I would suggest that we uh, put that into conditions that we uh, require trees Mr. 10 feet or whatever apart as we go down the sidewalks. And I'd like staff to comment if they think that's not a workable situation. But I think we have to do something. Mr. Mr. Evans. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm, I think we're sort of on the same page, but uh, I don't want to hold this up. But my thought is... Yeah, I don't either. Um, that maybe we need to to relook at the design uh, where you can meet your needs and uh, chairman has indicated that he believes that the RTC is the that's our regional transportation commission is actually funded I believe that whole uh, streetscape and might be appropriate maybe to meet with them and see if we can't get some continuity and in, in the big picture um, and, and my thought is that maybe we can hold this a few weeks and see if we can't figure that out. Are you really tight on financing? Or? Well, that will come into play, but I don't think it's going to make or break the project. And certainly if we can make some kind of a landscape plan that works, I think based on the actual requirement that's in place now, it may not be five feet, may not be wide enough to allow us to do that, but certainly some not. compromise or maybe some alternative, maybe it's a different style of landscape or something, we're happy to comply with that condition um, and, and, and work with staff and work with local uh, well, What I would like to see is, is a better example of what your final product that you hope it to look like because mm -hmm. the computer-generated stuff I have is just boxes. It doesn't mm -hmm. really give me any idea of what you know we would it would look like sure. I think a color rendering on the podium would be good Mr. Mr. that would really help yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think the applicant needs to and, and I'm hopefully staff has looked at this I believe they have the city through and I believe the money came from Snipla monies or, or some source is a major landscaping program on Casino Center which is underway right now yes and I think we would create a travesty along Casino Center if we arbitrarily said, you can build your project and it doesn't have to conform or integrate with that plan. Uh, I've had several property owners along Casino Center call me and go, have you been down here to see what's going on? It, it, it's Our whole neighborhood started to change. And, and that's critical. I understand yeah. your desire for parking, but I think uh, Commissioner Goins would be quick to tout the fact that there's going to be an ACE bus stop uh, proposed uh, within a block of this site, which I know the RTC is very excited about, mm -hmm. which is going to make it so people will be able to get from this area to the World Market Center okay. to all the way south along the Strip to Sunset, as long as money keeps flowing in to build that. So this does fall within that transit-oriented uh, area that was proposed when the uh, city adopted the BRT, which I think is changing to the ACE. Correct. Um, so I, I know you're concerned with parking, but I would hate to see us make a mistake right now. Uh, I think you can. I think there's a way for you to get a viable project, and us not throw all our standards out the door. Mm -hmm. And and so I I would support holding this. Um, and I think some of the questions are pretty significant. I don't know if two weeks. I think. Probably 30 days is the appropriate time frame if that works for you. Um, and so if I understand uh, renderings, some better rendering of the facade, and then we're uh, 
I guess I would be unclear on how we would address the landscape or the setback issues because um, even if we were to eliminate the parking, I think we've done the best we can on this project to get a, the feasibility there. And even at this point, it's challenged. Fewer units, same construction costs, and less revenue it is pretty much a, a dead uh, subject at this point, I, I fear. Um, we're certainly willing to look at it and understand it. I mean, a lot of the comments we got back from staff, I think we worked together uh, fairly fairly um, efficiently on. We're open, uh, certainly, but there's going to be some constraints, really, and we're, we're pretty much maxed out right now. And, and I'm, I'm willing mean. to, I want to say that I'd like to see what you, what you propose, but I would hate to see the city has just spent a fortune on Casino Center, and the first project that we get to see down in this south end, just south of the Arts District, mm -hmm. we gave up that whole streetscape right out of the gate. Yeah. Right. Um, we went down this road chasing every high rise that wanted to come yeah, downtown and every process, eager and hungry for development, and we're three, four years later now, we don't have that development, and I'd hate to see us go down another road making compromise after compromise. Sure. I think the development community should be understanding of what initiatives are in place on, on downtown mm -hmm. and try to bring projects that fit into that. I think what you have can work. It just uh, needs, needs to deal with that streetscape. And I'm going to defer to um, Director Wheeler on that because I think Commissioner, through Commissioner Evans, um, he wants to add an additional condition to address the landscaping. So um, I'll defer to Director Wheeler to kind of guide us to that. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, what we're finding is that really a 10-foot Dry, uh, sidewalk and Flynn is here so he's under orders to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong um, that the tree wells can be accommodated in, but it really is about a 10 foot minimum mm -hmm. that allows for the sidewalk an adequate sidewalk and the tree wells because there are some areas in downtown where the street width itself and the curvature or the, the what do you call it, the dome of the street, is such that um, the full 15 can't be accommodated, but really it takes 10 to accommodate a street tree program and adequate walking distance. So um, that's pretty much the minimum that we've found within the downtown area to um, accommodate a streetscape that is not markedly different from the standard. If I might also add to that, this is kind of an unusual case with this property, and it's something that we do see primarily in the Meadows Village area of the downtown Centennial Plan, where between the existing curve and the property line, we only have five feet to work with. Um, we don't have the additional room like we have closer to the core area, and so that's one of the problems faced by the applicant and something that we saw with the Stupak Center and another multifamily project that we had down in the Meadows Village area. So it's, again, very difficult to get the street trees in there when we only have five feet between the existing curb line and the property line. Okay, but Mr. Three, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Evans? The, the Casino Center is like crossing Casino Center is like a different time zone. It's a huge street, and I'm reluctant to think, and I'm not sure what the plan is because I know they've discussed at different times making it one way, uh, one direction and another street going the other way. I don't know what the gist of that is, um, but I find it incredible that such a huge, large, wide street that doesn't have the kinds of traffic, it doesn't convey the kind of traffic that a street that large would, that we can't figure out some way um, to meet some of those streetscape needs. Um, no. Mr. Chairman, if I may, Bart Anderson, Public Works. Mr. Anderson. In, a, in an effort to make it even more confusing, uh, I'd just like to mention that um, Casino Center is currently the uh, conceived route for the bus rapid transit project. Um, um, and as a result, even though it doesn't currently carry the traffic that you would expect an 80-foot street to carry, once you dedicate two lanes to the bus rapid transit vehicles, all that will be left is one lane in each direction, and it will be more uh, conducive to the, the traffic that's there. However, it will need the full right-of-way width to accommodate the 
bus rapid transit dedicated lanes and stations. I, I don't have the plans in front of me, the current plans for the BRT, but I know that this is the alignment. And that's part of the reason that Casino Center is um, specifically excluded from the downtown centennial standards for streetscape purposes. Um, and again, I, I, I endorse the idea of holding this so that we can do additional research in that regard and come to you with a, a more complete package. But I believe that certain streets were identified as being transportation oriented and were allowed to be developed differently than other streets. And Casino Center, I believe, is one of them. Thank you. Was, was it ever anticipated that Casino Center would require 15 feet? Or, or is this just not wide enough now? If we shouldn't have been excluded from these standards, because but now we have to give a waiver. So well, it wasn't excluded, apparently. Um, and that's the part that's a little challenging right now, yeah. is, is it's safer to, um, to do the waiver than not if it's needed. But in this case, if you look on page 38 of the uh, Las Vegas Downtown Centennial Plan, at least the version that I have, um, it shows the typical plan view of an 80-foot street with the 5-foot amenity zone and the 10-foot sidewalk, but it says typical north-south streets except Main Street, Casino Center, 4th Street, and Las Vegas Boulevard. Those are the ones that were specifically identified as uh, vehicular transportation oriented. So I believe that an argument can be made. That we don't need a waiver. That we may not. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but we're Commissioner still, Evans? We're still left with a building that I don't know what the end result will be, and I think the gentleman has made a commitment to come back and give us a better idea. But my thinking is, you know, to think outside the box. There might be ways that... You can create privacy patios, uh, cutouts in the building, atriums. Uh, if you're looking for a tree canopy, it doesn't have to be against the street. Uh, as long as it meets ADA standards, um, maybe there's a way that they can be incorporated in the building. I don't know. I'm not an architect, but what I'm telling you is that I really think this area of town deserves a maximum amount of our attention. And I would hope that when it comes back, it's something that I can... Uh, enthusiastically support not to, not to belabor the point but if I may chairman the um, if we could preserve the intent of that and it might be a planner box or something else and again I don't know if we can accommodate that in that five foot wide zone but we we understand the spirit of it and we agree with the landscape um, uh, issue and also the pedestrian access but I would also highlight that this is the end of South Casino Center and it basically dead ends almost in a one-way street at um, is it Las Vegas Boulevard there, or Wyoming at the end there? This is the very this is the very edge and end of South Casino Center as I know as I, as I know it today. And without knowing what those plans are, it'd be very hard for us to do anything else on the building envelope. Uh, preserving the parking, our assumptions are sound on the parking. We've seen it many situations before, especially in these urban. Uh, um, infilled parking is absolutely critical so we can't give it away that means we're compromising the context that means we're cutting down the number of units that means we don't have a project even if it's 10 different parking spaces and we don't provide 10 spaces we move the building back and we don't have that many units anything over a type 5 construction is going to raise the cost raise the engineering and other costs so we can't go higher our desire is to keep the model low low rise and keep it very clean so certainly but you um, are in agreement with holding this for 30 days and being able to go back and have some of those discussions with staff to see how we can get some type of landscaping and in the five foot in the five foot zone in the in that five foot zone well I think because if we're not compromising the envelope I think that we would be amenable right now or if we're talking about compromising the building envelope I think we're really talking about changing the um, the, the the actual it's just not viable yeah. right now it's a challenge viable because this is six or seven or eight years we'd have to hold the building before we'd see a return and I think that's the crux of the conversation but what I'm hearing through Chris Commissioner Evans who represents that area even if you may have to do something to that building to get there I think he wants you to at least have that discussion we, we can certainly and try maybe and even take it to the point of putting it in a rendering mm -hmm. and see how it looks we can, we, we, we'd happily do that 
I just want the, the commission to understand clearly what we're up against here, and certainly I won't even go into the environment, uh, financing environment, but let's just talk about the actual metrics of the building. It doesn't work if we contact, if we compress that site any more than it is right now, but why don't we try to address it, okay. and I'll address and both just, the I design and I just want to be real clear. I Mr. Evans, you'll you have the last word, and then we'll go no, ahead and yeah, motion I it. appreciate your... <laughs> your effort and I would like to see development there but I'm not cutting corners because somebody wants to build something I mean we've seen too many projects that have come forward and we have as a commission and as a council and as a city have bent over backwards to ensure that they get built and not much has come out of the ground down there so uh, and my commissioners some of them I know would probably very much disagree with me but the parking issue is not critical for me in these downtown uh, projects, especially something like this. The high cost of public par of providing parking in an urban core is what helps, in my mind, to raise the cost of these projects. And uh, I think we can get better bang for our buck if we don't require multiple parking spaces for every small little building. But that's just my opinion. But if we can hold it for 30 days, is that the consensus at your pleasure commissioner that would be my motion to hold this for 30 days and I, I would I think you may have some direction to work with our staff and see what we can come up with okay. there's a motion that would be to the meeting of July 24th it, yes and agenda items number 28 and 29 motions on the Thank floor you. to hold items 28 and 29 for 30 days please cast your vote and that motion has passed and Yes, the applicant, you're talking to just the right man right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> items 30 and 31 are related items. We'll take these items in order, and then we'll have a short break, and we'll continue with the rest of the agenda. Item 30, VAR 28081, applicant owner David Maddox, to allow a 0.5-foot setback where 10 feet is required for an existing building at 3220 North Rancho. Item 31, SDR 28080 for an existing building and landscape material slash lumber yard with a waiver to allow a zero foot landscape buffer along the north, south, and east perimeter where an eight foot buffer is required at 3220 and 3240 North Rancho. Is there an applicant on this item here? Please come forward, staff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, staff is unable to support the request for the uh, setback variance as there's no unusual shape to the uh, lot and it recommends denial. As such, uh, the site plan does not function uh, with that and uh, recommends denial of the site plan also. Thank you. Applicant, name and address for the record. Uh, my name is um, David Maddox, 3340 North Rancho. Um, basically what I'm here to do is address you to allow me to stay in business. We've been at that location approximately nine years. Uh, I've been doing business as a spa retailer and manufacturer for over 25 years <clears throat> in Las Vegas for 20 years. Um, we did some research on the buildings on site. Um, the wooden structure that's there, I have permits that show it was converted to uh, an office as of 1977. Uh, we couldn't find any permits to allow the metal building, even though I did a lot of research on it. <clears throat> I believe that the property, the way it sits, is the way it's been for almost 60 years. Now, I do agree that the white metal building that's there is not the most attractive thing, but unfortunately, when we purchased the property, we believed that they were permitted, and now I've come to find out that there is no permit on that metal building, or at least I can't find one. So basically what I'm asking you to do is allow something that has existed to exist. Um, we're in a tight e economic situation. Spa manufacturing and retail sales has probably hit one of the hardest. Um, I have joined with Creative Spa Designs to maintain this facility for me so we can keep the upkeep, make it look good. Um, we started at that location in about 1999. Uh, 2002 we were required to pull a special use permit to stay there we put parking places in we spent about two hundred thousand dollars to upgrade the front of the facility to, to maintain that special use permit we purchased the property in 2004 
at the point that we had the special use permit, we only occupied half the land. When we purchased it, we now occupy the whole property. So there's been some inconsistencies with our special use permit as to having half the property and both pieces. So basically at this point, what I'm trying to do is just figure out what it's going to take for me to stay there, make everybody happy. We have tried to do what we could all the, all the years that we've been there. When issues have come up, we've tried to resolve them. So, you know, that's pretty much all I've got. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience would like to speak on this item? Please come forward. I see two gentlemen. There are two mics. Give you about two minutes apiece. Please state your name and address for the record and whether you're for or against the project. Uh, Mark Serban, RC Development. 832 Butch Cassidy Lane Henderson 89002 and we're against this project uh, my company owns the property to the north of his uh, when we built our property we were required to drain into the front of his for the natural runoff for that area uh, I don't know if he has done it or if it was done by somebody else before he took the property over but they built up and put a parking lot that stops all our drainage up. So, so you're getting a puddle? We get a puddle. And a puddle or a spa? A spa. <laughs> I've got some pictures here that uh, kind of, they, these are from from our lot. We can see those. If you look through the trucks you can see where that's higher. This in front of this red and white truck is the points where we were required to to run our property off for natural drainage. Who required you to drain your property onto someone else's property? Uh, Rancho is Dot Street, and the properties are City of Las Vegas. Uh, Dot requires that runoff from their road to run down, we were told, and they wouldn't let us run onto the street. So our property drains from the back towards the front, from the front towards this spot, and they both run off the side. Okay. So... Back to my question. Who required you to drain your property onto someone else's? The city of Las Vegas. Do, did you obtain an easement to do such? Yes. No, sir. We, well, we have yes. approved plans that we were required to. Can we trail this? Mm -hmm. Will I look at that? Pardon? Let, let me defer to public works. As to whether we can trail this? Well, no. As to sure. as to the approved <laughs> as to the request to drain towards another property, was well, that permission granted by the city? Uh, typically, we we don't necessarily require that it drain in a particular way. What we do is it approve uh, what their engineer proposes if it meets um, our criteria. The gentleman who, who is speaking right now, his site apparently, um, uh, he had come in, I guess, last week and spoken to some people. Uh, sure. And so I had the opportunity to pull the, the grading plans that were submitted. His site was uh, done in 1994, and it did propose to drain onto his neighbor's site. It was approved that way, but there was no drainage study required um, uh, back then. Uh, they were claiming historical flow. Uh, which is an accepted criteria. His neighbor was developed in 2004, and based on his grading plan, there, based on the, the elevation submitted, there is no problem with draining, at least on paper. There is uh, nothing that we see that prevents the drainage. So I would dispute his contention that the city of Las Vegas required him to drain onto his neighbor's property. But we did approve the plan that was presented that showed that draining onto his neighbor's property. Okay, thank you. Well, Mr. Dunham, you look part of the applicant team. <laughs> you're going to abstain, or are you going to give us your professional yeah. engineering opinion on that drain? Just out of curiosity through you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Evans? maybe we can have the gentleman finish, but the whether or not the, the drainage would it impact the decision that we have to make on this application for the variance in the site development review? Uh, is this a part of, I'm assuming that the argument that's being made, I think, by the neighbor is that 
Well, I'm not real clear what your argument is. Well, my argument is that if you approve him a variance for this and don't require him to do his edge of property improvements the way that they're supposed to be done, there is no opportunity to give good drainage to that. Okay. To that flow of water. So when NDOT wouldn't let us drain onto Rancho and the city of Las Vegas approved us to come on to the natural flow of the water that was currently there, we kind of got ourselves now with this property next door being higher than ours. We've got a dam situation where we're getting backed up the lake if it rains. And that's hard on asphalt to have standing water in your asphalt, and we have to maintain our property as such to keep that asphalt in good repair. And that goes along with the fact, too, that if he doesn't have to do his landscaping in the front, it breaks up the street as well for free. The way I saw on the news lately with those people sandbagging in Iowa. I don't want to cut. Yeah. And that's our concern is that we just redid our parking lot. I can't remember what we spent on it. It was quite expensive, though, to resurface or reseal it and everything due to the standing water. Thank you. Commissioner Dunham, you want to comment on your findings? Well, I'm just trying to see what kind of conditions that we are placing on there because the off-sites are in. Okay. So whether the variance and the – and you have to excuse me because I have two agendas and they're both different numbers and I've got notes. We'll go ahead and listen to the applicant's other person speak. Name and address of record. My name is Patrick Gaffney, 6702 Irvin Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89118. I'm here on behalf of Jim Rogers. Jim Rogers is a business partner of mine. And uh, he can't be here tonight because he's uh, out in Ely, I believe, uh, with uh, children, needy children, doing a week, a charity week. So he asked me to come in his place. Uh, I have talked to him about this drainage, and he did inform me that the city did require him to drain from one property to the next property to the next property. Also, this gentleman's property, Jim's property is here, this gentleman's property is here. The natural drainage before, uh, my understanding is they put in a parking lot without a permit, so they just went ahead and put it in. It's a good foot and a half, maybe two foot higher. So what happens is this water that's supposed to go this way goes back in this way. That's one of the problems. The second problem is the gentleman is requesting a zero, a zero lot line. Now, a zero lot line will affect our business. So that's why we object. We don't think it's fair. We were required to do things in setback, and this is what Jim asked me to convey to you people, that he strongly objects to this, and he recommends that the city deny this application. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public... Oh, this is, we'll close the public hearing. We'll entertain comments and questions from the board. Commissioner yeah, like uh, this is a this site is very strange. Uh, the parking lot is paved in the front part along Rancho uh, and striped, and then the business is about five feet below that in the middle and rear part of the property. And in fact, if somebody who's handicapped parks in a handicapped space, they've got to go down a 45 degree angle to get to the business. Something's wrong here. Something was created improperly. Well, it's not, it's not a 45 degree angle. It is about a 45 degree angle down to five feet below it, extended out the way you've done it. The other thing is, I don't believe that that building has been there since the 70s, if Never. you're claiming that. I have a permit on it. You do? Yeah. Why are we having a question? I don't know. That's, that's, that's my the old question. Howard's building. What's that? That's the old Howard's building, right? Yes. That building's North been there since I was in high school. 3340 30 30 North Rancho. Years. I think it was probably the original building yeah. in Las Vegas, it's probably been, before anything else. At least 30 years. It's probably more like 50. So what are we at being asked to do relative to that building? No, actually, the request is a variance for the metal building, not the wood structure. The wood structure oh, was original yeah, residential. Metal, I'm talking about the metal building. Yeah, the metal building was probably placed on the property sometime in the early 90s is the best we can yeah, determine. Way, way before I got here. Well, I'd like to know why the site continues to have graffiti in the front and the back, why you have wire, razor wire, on the fence in the back, which is not permitted, and why these things keep going on when you're trying to get us to do all these other things. Well, the graffiti in the front showed up last week. Um, up until last week, we didn't have slats on that side of the fence. How so about the back? The back, I don't. Even, I drove around looking for it today. I couldn't find where the graffiti on the back was. Oh, I'll help you with it. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, <coughs> Mr. Stein, Mr. maybe you can help me, or, or Commissioner Truesdale. I'm trying to remember. I remember you being here in the past. Yes. And, and I kind of remember... You had an open-air 
spa thing and yes. um, and and your share of trouble, I think, if I remember. Um, but it, the backup that we have says that as less than a year ago that you were cited for green water in the spas or the pools, and then there's another one just in February that talks about warehousing and manufacturing on site for non-permitted fences and structures, and then another one that uh, uh, talks about the, um, I think it's a, a, an annual uh, uh, review or something. I, I just remember this being problematic, and, and I don't know what the deal is now. I can't quite wrap my hands around it. I think well, you're asking to build out to the beyond what you're supposed to. We're right? actually not asking to build or do anything other than what's been on the property for 30 or 40 or 50 years. We're just trying to maintain that. As far as the issues, as far as the swimming pools, in June we would get sighted. Uh, as soon as the temperature changes, three days the pools can turn green and mysteriously somebody shows up because I looked the dates up about the same time and then we corrected those problems. Um, as far as uh, the driveway was part of our special use permit and yeah we had to obtain every permit in the world because the DOT was the one that issued all those permits and we got them all signed off. They're the ones that required us to do everything that we did. We did it all up to code. Um, you know, with as with you the know, parking lot? Are you talking with, about? The with the parking lot. The we didn't require that? We didn't have approval of that? You, you had, you had Past the sidewalk, I believe, and uh, in front of the sidewalk that the DOT had. The, the, the parking area was approved under special use permit U26, or sorry, uh, U11995. Or no, I'm sorry, U5202, I'm sorry, was approved okay. as part of that special use permit. Staff of the Commission, I, I know we're getting into parking lots and everything else, but let's keep on point with what the applicant's request is. Yeah. And that's for the, uh, the 0 0.5 setback. And also the, the 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 waivers he was requesting. I, I want to make a comment that Thank the, you. there's a new property to the south, just finished, mm -hmm. with a new parking lot back and everything. That building sits basically in that parking lot. It's so close to that lot. Well, on the and, wall and there. you gave a zero lot line on that building too. So that building runs right on my property line. So they don't they don't have any setback at all with their property with what they just built. So the green, the green monster you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that's right on my property line. In your picture right there, that's the property line. Yeah, exactly. But I'm talking about the back where your illegal so, building is. So as far as the back of the building, they've got a fence that's seven or eight feet tall on the other side. Yeah. And hides most of the building from the back side. The other building from the other direction, you, I mean, they've got a building that blocks it from side of the residence on the other side. They just put that building up on the far corner. But I mean, <clears throat> it's been there, you know, 40, 50 years. We, you guys have, have authorized permits on that property with it being in place, and I don't understand. Now, I couldn't find a permit, I'll give you that. Uh, I believe when I bought the property, there was a permit on it. So that's what the, the question is, is was there a permit or wasn't there a permit? I went through this process to try to comply to bring it up to you know what your standards were. I, I don't really think I'm being that unreasonable. Well, and to get back on the point, what you're asking for tonight really is irrelevant of these two gentlemen's drainage problems. So staff does not have any, any conditions. Uh, their as-if approved conditions really do not either help or hinder your, your point. You, you definitely have a problem, and I think you actually have cause against, I'll, I'll go over that later, uh, off the record as to what you can do to, to rectify some of your problems. But I think the point is tonight, your zero lot line does not affect the two people that spoke tonight. The staff's conditions do not affect the drainage. Um, the only problem I had was that I wanted to add a couple of conditions on this, and I think I went over that with Director Wheeler and maybe even to the fact of a one-year review. But other than that, I'm ready to make a motion for approval unless someone else has some objections or some comments. Any more questions or comments from commissioners? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 30. Uh, on item 30, I would move for approval with uh, staff's as-if approved conditions, and, and we'll add some on the uh, site development review. So promotion is for approval. 
Motions for approval on item 30. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed for approval. On item 31, I would move uh, for approval with subject to staffs as if approved conditions and then possibly add a one-year review and then whatever Director Wheeler is going to add. Um, thank you, and Chairman. I have no storage will be allowed within the existing paved parking area that the existing chain link fence shall be maintained in its current condition and that all storage to be screened from view and behind the existing chain link fence and that there would be an, a, uh, an administrative review one year from the date of council action. And, and, and I would even like to elaborate on that, that the graffiti on that chain link fence was it was not part of the as if or existing conditions. Oh, obviously, yes. <laughs> did, Thank you. So that was my motion. Um, does the maker of the condition wish to re have a requirement to remove the existing razor wire? Uh, sure. Thank you. That would be um, within 60 days. You in agreement with that, applicant? Um, you know, unfortunately, with the amount of uh, theft in that area, that's the only spot that we're exposed right now. So, I don't, I, th I don't think it's seen from anywhere. You know, it's not real visible. I found uh, it. I found that? it, but you don't have it on the other three sides. But you're good at looking for things like I, that. Apparently, <laughs> I am. Well, and, and <laughs> he's going to be in the spa next. <laughs> let me make, let me make a real quick comment here. You saw the what the right here. You saw what the vote was just a minute ago. Yes. If it were me, I would accept that condition. And I, I accept, I accept and, that condition. And hope that it goes 4-3 <laughs> and maybe make come back and ask for the razor wire to, with a different application or something if it becomes that critical. I, I agree. Motion's on the floor for approval with um, added conditions. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. And all matters go forward to the City Council on August 6th. We're going to take about a 10-minute recess, and we'll begin uh, in about 10 minutes with item 32. Thank you. We're going to begin in about two minutes. Ms. Clark, you, you can bring that up to the, to the clerk. Even though it's not the standard eight and a half by eleven size, can it still be put in the record? Chairman, do you have any idea when that was withdrawn? It was withdrawn today during our advance withdrawal items, yes. And you're welcome to call staff at any time and ask them about that. We're going to begin the last portion of the agenda. Item 32, SUP 28105, applicant owners Stephen and Cynthia Baker for a proposed 975 square foot accessory structure, class one with kitchen at 6300 Raycell Street. Staff? 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the uh, application uh, meets all the development standards and staff finds the use to be compatible with the surrounding area and is recommending approval. Thank you. Applicant? Yeah, Brian Anderson, uh, 8876 Sparkling Creek Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, here representing Steve and Cynthia Baker. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about, about the request. Yes, the request is for a 975 square foot uh, casita. Uh, we're applying for the special use permit in order to uh, include a kitchen uh, as it's required. Um, the structure is going to be used as a temporary home for uh, Mrs. Baker's mother and father. So her father fell ill, and so they wanted to move them closer to them. Thank you very much. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience for or against this item, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the commissioners? Yes, sir. I, I just, oh, oh, is there the people to, oh, I just like to know, is it permissible to have a garage on a casita? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Well, I've never, casita means something else. It doesn't mean garage. <laughs> it's adjacent to. It's attached and adjacent to. We're making a new home back there. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, if you're, yeah, I, I think the applicant has made a compelling argument, and I believe our staff is recommending support. Um, my motion would be for approval with all conditions. Motion on the floor for approval of item 32. Please cast your vote. Thank you. I didn't. Madam Clerk, it came up. It came up? Yeah. Okay. That goes forward to the okay. City Council on August 6th. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk's handing out this item. Item 33, SUP 28127. Applicant VIP bail bonds, owner Clarence and Cressy Noble, for a proposed bail bond service at 1363 West Owens Boulevard. Staff? Mr. Chairman, staff finds that the proposed use is not compatible with the surrounding area and therefore is recommending denial. Thank you. Thank you. Applicant? Uh, my name is Tim Johnson, 1363 West Owens, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here to represent uh, Nakia Woodson. She's the owner of VIP Bell Ponds. Okay. And the request is to? Our request is we were about uh, a block west uh, before and we wanted to move to this location for better exposure uh, to do better more business and uh, that's the request thank you this is a public hearing anybody speak for or against this item please come forward seeing none we'll close the public hearing comments or questions from the board Commissioner Steinman well I noticed there's a huge child care facilities across the street I mean a lot of child care and there's a church two lots away to the east. And yet, and there's already, a, I think, a, a sign-up for this service. Uh, what's going on? Uh, from what I understand, uh, the company moved there a few months ago, sir. Their lease was up at the other location. And with commercial business leases, there are three years. And they didn't want to re-sign up for another three-year commitment, so they went ahead and moved. And uh, they didn't think it was going to be any uh, problems. They've moved before, and it was never an issue in a close vicinity. And in that area, there's, I think I've read before, is the highest concentration of churches in that area. Um, so no matter where you move, you're going to be oh, close that's right. to a church. There's also a high concentration of kids right there. And I and I don't understand the need for bail bonds service this far away from jails and so on. I mean, explain to me why this is so far away from uh, being locked up and need well, to get out of jail. Well, well, I'm not an expert, but I would say that uh, I don't think it makes a difference how far because how far away. But usually, people look in the yellow pages and they're not driving down the street. Because uh, I know there's a place where they call Bell Bonds Alley. Yep. It's very expensive down Bell's Bonds Alley. And when you're a new company, uh, VIP has been in business for three years and has turned a profit every year. But it's very expensive to go down that street, Bell Bonds uh, Alley. 
And so when you start off slow and small, you have to be in other areas. And people typically look in the yellow pages or get referrals. They're not, you know, finding it just driving down the street. They're near their clientele. Well, that, that bothers me that they're out in the neighborhood like this with all this around it. Uh, We're the did only, they get uh, cite, uh, staff, did they get cited for operating here at all? Or they, how, how did this come about? Because obviously they tried to go into business. Um, the applicants had a previous business location and applied for a change of location of the business license to this, at which time we denied that pending the approval of a special use permit at this okay. location. All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, we're, we're doing quite a bit of improvement right there. We're widening Martin Luther King. Uh, we're moving the Cox Communication headquarters are right across the street. I understand that they moved here and they probably thought it was okay, but I I guess I'm not sure this is an appropriate location. And um, It's one block away from where we were at before. One, uh, one, it was one block west from what I understand. Uh, one block west would be in an R.E. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. I, I still believe that um, it's incumbent to get the use permit up front, and, and I staff's recommending denial, and I'm going to follow along with staff's recommendations. And Thank if there are no other comments on that. A motion? Well, my comment is I want to echo the same thing. I just think it's in too close proximity to, to um, daycare centers. And I also just wanted to point out that in the um, – Las Vegas 2020 master plan, it clearly states that mature neighborhoods will be sustained and improved through appropriate and selective high quality redevelopment and, and um, um, preservation. And I don't think this is the highest of quality of development, and, and I'm very concerned uh, about the daycare center that's across the street. So I'll be supporting staff's recommendation. With that, I'll, if there's no comments or questions on on the item, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make move for uh, to follow staff's recommendations for denial. Motion on the floor for item 33 is uh, for denial. Yes vote is for denial. Cast your vote. And that motion has passed. And that denial is final action in the absence of an appeal to the office of the city clerk within 10 days. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So you can appeal that in 10 days. Yeah, I understand. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Item 34, SUP 28130, Applicant Focus in Southern Nevada, Owner, Metropolitan Community Church of Las Vegas for a social service provider at 1140 Almond Tree Lane, Suite Number 306. Staff? Subject site is suitable for the proposed use. Therefore, staff is recommending approval of the application. Thank you. Applicant? Uh, good evening. My name is Tim Conroy. I'm Chief Executive Officer of the Winged Dragon Society doing business as Focus in Southern Nevada. I reside at 1313 Benita Avenue. Um, first of all, we'd like to congratulate the City of Las Vegas for proclaiming tomorrow, June 27th, National um, HIV AIDS Testing Day. <clears throat> and to thank Evan Duvall from the Planning Department for working with us in this process. Um, we understand uh, staff had a question or concern regarding the lobby. Um, it's about 150 square feet at this point. The front door is up here. The lobby is right here. Um, what we proposed is down this hallway. Um, there are six additional offices right here that the hallway, um, it's over seven feet wide, that the, the um, space next to the wall would be additional um, waiting area. Um, it would achieve another 192 square feet. Um, so we're just kind of throwing that out for additional input. And right now this big space in the center is um, vacant and basically going to be used for program overflow for any additional office cubicles and for overflow of, of uh, clients waiting. Um, <clears throat> we understand we need to meet with the fire protection engineering section about our fire inspection. 
Um, staff did recommend Monday through Friday, 8 through 10, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, in our original justification letter, we asked for weekend hours, mostly because the current um, HIV and AIDS clients that actually do work for a living that aren't on disability, it's difficult for them to access services Monday through Friday without taking time off work. So we requested evening and weekend hours for additional appointments. And we understand that uh, there would be a one-year review. Okay. Real quick, will this, will you be occupying an office with inside the church? No. The church, Metropolitan Community Church, owns the whole building at 1140 Almond Tree Lane. So you're just... We're renting suites 306 through 309 within the building. Gotcha. Not within the church? Not, no, not within the church offices nor the church sanctuary. Okay. Thank you. Are you finished? Yep. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anybody in the audience for or against this, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions by the board? Commissioner Evans? Yes. Um... I wanted to state I'm not I'm not familiar with this group, but the Metropolitan Community Church, Church. and the Community Counseling Center, uh, I think both have been operating there for a number of years. Right. Um, I think they provide uh, a great deal of counseling. I've never known there to be any problems in the area. So unless the uh, uh, my colleagues have other views. I would think that it might be an appropriate location for this kind of facility. So, okay. I was um, just reading in the, and in, in to your point, Commissioner Evans, where on a field check, it just said that um, it was conducted at the site and found that parking lot needs adequate stripping, additional, or and a substantial amount of graffiti currently resides on this building. So. Um, not the owners of the building that are here, the church, but that's something that may meet, need to be addressed as well. Um, right now they aren't here. Um, their board of directors does come down every Saturday and repaint over the graffiti. It's a continual process. Okay. Um, what we did offer to the church um, that we would maintain um, cleaning up the graffiti daily um, just so that they their board of directors all work and they take an additional day to come in on Saturday to take care of the graffiti. We'd be there every day and have offered to take care of that for them. Any more questions or comments from the board? Yeah. Commissioner uh, Steinman? I, I don't think we've sold the hours that he asked for. I, I know the staff has kept it to Monday through Friday, but if what kind of hours do you seek on the weekend that you need? Um, basically, um, we're looking probably 8 a.m. through 4 p.m. We could deal with less. Um, obviously, if the services aren't needed, we would cut back because we don't need to spend money if the services aren't being uh, yeah. filled. And, and this is a location that, whether it's Thursday or Saturday, doesn't cause a lot of grief to a lot of no. people back here. It's off the beaten path. Right. Let me we, sure you. we are working um, with the... Uh, because the, the building was built in 1971, and staff did determine that the building is parking impaired. Um, not to hold us up, but we are working with the church to see if we can work with the uh, owner of the business across the street from us to act as an overflow parking that would solve any additional problems that could come up. Make sure you get it in writing. Yes, sir. And I, and I would, I mean, I have no objection to, a, you want Sunday also or just Saturday? Um, Saturday and Sunday. Um, but we, we would live with whatever you recommend. Okay. I, I think you ought to have Saturday hours. I believe what you say about people working and so right. on. And I'd, I'd recommend that we put add on there that we do 8 to 4 on Saturdays and hope that takes care of your weekend issues. That would be okay. fine. And then relative to the 300 square feet that the staff believes you need for a lobby, I, I tend to agree with it. But I see that you say, well, we'll sit them in the hallways outside those rooms. That's not really a very good waiting situation when... They're, standing, they're sitting outside of offices. Is that a good situation for you? Um, part of it, um, there's six offices down that hallway, yes. and it would be specifically for appointments in those offices. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not sure you want other people sitting outside of offices where there's people having appointments. But it looks like you have the space to expand. Yeah, we, uh, right now the, the big space is almost 1,500 square feet. There's yeah. plenty of room to expand yeah. and grow. So. Yeah, I, I'd like to see you, you do that. I think it makes sense both internally for you and so they're not going out on the street they have a place to be and so on okay. that's really why they're pushing that oh no I understand okay so if anybody I'll make a, a motion if uh, 
If Any more I, questions or comments from the board? Um, Mr. Scott? Just one. If you were going to reference something for Sunday, would you want them closed on Sundays, or do you want to add the... Well, I think we've established Sunday? that... Uh, Saturday 8 to 4 would be sufficient. Do you, we closed do you on Sunday. Oh, that's fine. Yes. I, I wanted to make sure, does the MCC meet there on Sundays? Um, yes, they do, actually. Okay, They're because that might be the, uh, the best, what Commissioner Steinman is recommending, because you, you don't want all of their members and, and have a parking problem right. that spills out into elsewhere. Um, and clearly there are the empty lots across the street. There's plenty of places to park. Yeah. If there were other things, so I would support the Saturday hours from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the closed Sundays. But I did want to, Commissioner Steinman, before you make the motion, I did want to uh, to encourage you to tell your clients that uh, the conditions of approval, uh, item number one, says that in a year you're going to have to go back to make sure that you've been in compliance and there aren't any problems. Right. So I would make sure that your clients are fully aware that. Um, that the city council, the city has the ability within next year when they review it, if there are code violations or any problems, uh, they can require you to cease operations. So you do that at your peril, and I would hope, uh, wish the best of you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, I have one question. I'm just reading this, and I, I commend the applicant for the services they provide. But it talks about in, the, in some of the backup here subletting to other social services and my concerns are that the social service you're providing I, is appropriate in this location but there is a high school, a J, or I mean a junior high school, there's right. other, the church you know there are some other social services I'm not so sure that we, I think we're giving a blanket approval here, that's what I'm trying to understand, <coughs> we're not the, the major goal of this was to uh, try to create a one-stop shopping for HIV and AIDS clients. Currently, they travel all across the valley. Um, some of the social service agencies, their leases are, become, are coming to a close, and we're trying to convince additional um, established agencies to move in with us also. Um, but well, what I'm, what I'm getting at is I would hate to, to have our approval of your application here wind up having a... Um, project like Choice or an operation where Meth it's methadone treatment. No, no. I don't, all the services that, will be that, HIV and AIDS related. No homeless whatsoever, um, and anything that would come in to operate would have to come before for a business license and go through the process. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm making that uh, motion on agenda item 34, SUP 28130, move for approval, subject conditions, and I will change condition three. To add Saturdays from 8 to 4 and closed on Sundays. And other conditions shall remain as uh, oh, in the uh, write up. Motions on the floor for approval of item 34 with an amended um, to amendment to condition number 3. Please cast your vote. And that motion has been approved. And this goes forward to the City Council on August 6th. Thank you. Right. Thank you. That concludes the public hearing items. On to our Director Business. Item 37, DIR 27811, Applicant Owner, City of Las Vegas, to provide an update on the Las Vegas 2020 Master Plan. Staff? Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission, I apologize for not having a beautiful PowerPoint presentation this evening. But as my visual aid, I do have our 2020 Master Plan sitting here on the counter. The 2020 Master Plan was originally adopted in September of 2000, and as you can see, it's a rather large book. It's important that we don't put this on a shelf and uh, look back on it from time to time. It's important that we actually implement the policies and objectives that are contained in the master plan. There are a total of 182 policies and objectives, 110 of which are under the direct responsibility of the Planning and Development Department. And what we wanted to do is to give you a brief report this evening about our progress in terms of implementing some of those policies and objectives. One of the things I did, because the staff report is rather brief, uh, we had a handout here where we identify all of the policies and objectives and our progress on each. Uh, we provided that as backup material, but just to give you a brief verbal overview, in terms of some of the things that we are working on or have completed under the area of reurbanization, one of the things it calls for is the creation of a series of districts in the downtown area. 
You can see through the improvements that have been made in the entertainment district and the recent gateway um, features that were approved for the arts district that we are making progress in that area in terms of defining the districts in the downtown area. Another one of the policies relative to reurbanization is to continue the role of downtown as a hub for government functions with the construction of the federal courthouse, the regional justice center, and the new city hall. Downtown will continue to be that hub as recommended in the 2020 master plan. Under neighborhood revitalization, it talks about mixed use development as a way to cure blight or to utilize on vacant sites. Since this was adopted in 2000, we have um, adopted mixed use development regulations, expanded those to uh, address that situation. Another thing that it calls for is senior and assisted living facilities to be available. Uh, the Neighborhood Services Department has provided funds or made land available for the development of nonprofit housing. So again, we do rely on other departments to assist us with the implementation of the 2020 Master Plan. Some of the things that are incomplete as of this point in time, number one is guidelines for the reuse of historical structures. We've worked on those but haven't been successful in getting those approved. Another thing that it talks about in the 2020 master plan is the adoption of SEPTED principles or crime prevention through environmental design. Uh, that's certainly something that's on our radar as we look at Title 19. Another thing it talks about is corridor beautification plans. And as we mentioned at our workshop that we recently had with you, that's something that's also on our radar. And we have a new team that's going to be assisting us in developing those. So again, there are a lot of policies and objectives. We aren't uh, putting this document by the wayside, but rather we are working to implement those policies and objectives. And as you've seen over the past year, where we have either adopted or in process with six new elements to the master plan, we do continue to update that and to look at the policies and goals of the city. That concludes my report, and I'll go ahead and take any questions that you might have. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is anybody in the audience like to speak for or against this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? Commissioner Steinman. As it relates to historic structures, since I've been sitting here, I keep hearing the area uh, where the lawyers have moved in and changed over all the houses, a historic district. Uh, I sometimes take exception to that being totally historic, but is that one of the areas where we you, you propose to have guidelines defined? I mean, are we off base there and we should be looking at the old post office? We're looking at a number of different areas. Certainly that area that you refer to, the Las Vegas High School uh, District, is uh, an area that's mentioned in the 2020 Master Plan relative to developing historic guidelines. But there are also other areas guidelines could apply to our residential neighborhoods that are either in the process of looking at historic designation or the ones that we already have designated. It can also apply to our commercial structures in the downtown area as well. So there is a range of application relative to those guidelines. Will our guidelines define what is historical? What's the, what's the guideline to become historical before we even get into the guidelines of how to redevelop? No, those definitions are already in place. Okay. What's more important is to look at uh, how we preserve that character, um, most importantly in terms of the architecture. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion on item 37. In regards to item number 37, uh, Director's Business 27811, make a recommendation for approval. So we tell well, there are no conditions. Make a recommendation for approval. Motion's on the floor for approval. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed. And that goes forward to Council on August 6th. Item 38, TXT 28053, Applicant City of Las Vegas, discussion and possible action to amend the City of Las Vegas Zoning Ordinance. Title 19 to update and revise various requirements and make corrections and clarifications as appropriate to chapters 19.00, 19.02, 19.04, 19.06, 19.08, 19.12, 19.18, and 19.120. Staff. Mr. Chair and members of the Commission, let me start off with uh, perhaps the item of most interest relative to this proposed text amendment. We had originally been directed to look at the county's guidelines relative to financial institutions. Uh, 
we did that with the proposal that you have before you however the county adopted an ordinance that's already like our own so what we're proposing to do this evening is to strike the proposed language relative to financial institutions so if there is any motion on this particular text amendment I would ask that you um, revise condition number two as contained in your staff report to eliminate the language that is proposed relative to financial institutions so in summary, our, what we were proposing uh, is going to just remain as it currently is in the code. So there are no changes to our regulations for financial institutions. Some of the other elements of this text amendment, if I could just go through those briefly with you. Number one, we are proposing changes to the minimum acreage required for our TND or traditional neighborhood development uh, land use category and also our PD plan development land use category changing TND from 80 acres down to 50 acres and changing PD from five acres up to 50 acres so that there's a similar standard for both of those designations. We are also adding a number of new uses to this uh, proposed text amendment. Number one would be uh, the use of convalescent hospital. We're also defining, defining convenience store and grocery store so those all become new uses. With the adoption of the convalescent hospital use, we would remove the psychiatric hospital use as that would no longer be necessary for us. Another change that we are proposing here is relative to non-restricted gaming establishments. We are defining that they may have multiple alcohol uses on site. This is for our casino hotel properties. We just want to clarify that uh, they can have multiple uses, mul multiple alcohol uses, as that not, is not currently specified in Title 19, but is allowable under NRS. There is also a brief um, modification to our airport overlay district regulations. We are creating a reference to Nellis Air Force Base, requiring us to coordinate with them. This does not change our airport overlay boundaries or um, our height limits, but rather uh, one of the things that we've been requested to do is to work with them and provide information to them relative to the projects that we have coming into the city, so we're more than happy to do that. In terms of sustainability issues, we had some impediments in our code relative to solar panels, and so we're making some modifications there so that those can be applied more readily to both commercial and residential structures while maintaining neighborhood character. Another change that we're proposing is relative to perimeter landscaping. We're just identifying the requirement along freeways as that is not currently in the code. And then finally, we are making some uh, changes to our definition sections to cover the new uses that we're adding and other changes that we've made. That concludes my presentation and I will go ahead and take your questions. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Does anybody in the audience like to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, good evening. I'm uh, Mark Fiorentino representing the Focus Property Group this evening. Thank you um, very much for giving me an opportunity to speak briefly on this uh, text amendment. Uh, we had uh, discussed this. I'm sorry. Mr. Fiorentino, let me interrupt you. I need to make a disclosure. Um, KKBR and F. Um, I was retained by a uh, client on a project in Indian Springs, which uh, subsequently hired his law firm as their lawyer, but they don't represent me, and I've talked with the city attorney, and I feel confident that I can go ahead and, uh, and vote on this matter. So just wanted to disclose that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We had a, a brief conversation with the staff about um, a, a small portion of the text amendment in the last couple of days, and they suggested that we come down and express um, some of our concerns to you. We um, have an interest in the portion of the text amendment that proposes to change the minimum acreage for the PD zoning district. As staff pointed out to you, the current regulations have a five-acre minimum, and then they have a waiver provision um, if you take action on this text amendment it goes forward and actually gets adopted you would change the minimum from five acres to 50 acres and you would eliminate any pot potential for you to consider any waivers or deviations from that standard just very briefly we have two general concerns with that proposed change the first is that that PD district has actually in our experience at least worked very well for the city and since the time you've adopted it it's worked in terms of both larger projects like Providence and Lone Mountain and Lone Mountain West but it's also worked fairly well 
for smaller projects below the 50 acres that are being um, represented to you. The one I know the most about is rel should be familiar to you, is relatively new. For example, the, um, the project that we did here at Hawalapai in 215, that was zoned um, PD. It's only about 22 acres. We spent very many months working on that project with staff and with the neighbors and the value of the PD zoning district in that case was in order to come forward we had to be completely done. We had to have complete development standards that left nothing to chance. In other words we had all the architecture, all the setbacks, all the sign standards, everything was in one package. If that regulation that proposed tonight was in place we could not have done that. Our alternative would have been to do C1 or C2 and we would have had much less flexibility, not only in just the development standards, but in the uses. You might remember again that in that particular application, we were able to s restrict it to specific uses because that's what the PD not only allows you to do, but requ excuse me, requires you to do. Our other concern is that um, we think if this goes forward and is adopted, you're going to um, create some severe, we hope, unintended consequences. You're going to have hundreds of property owners who will ha own property who will have no conforming zone change district that they can seek. And let me show you what I'm talking about. In section one, for example, this is section one in the city. This is all planned PCD. The only conforming zoning district in PCD is the PD zoning district. That same, of all, same is true of all this land down here in the city. Let me give you a blow up of section one. There are no situations in section one, for example. That's the area I just showed you that is PCD. There is not 50 contiguous acres in section one. You can see that this is a very scattered ownership. It's also true in section two, which today is not planned for PCD in the city, but is planned in the county for major projects, has been annexed into the city, and the county's uh, city's equivalent of the major uh, project designation in the county would be PCD. This is very scattered ownership. You can tell that there, there are all, multiple properties out here, owners out here, who don't have 50 acres. They will have no choice but to seek non-conforming zone changes in every instance, which seems to me to not be a good result. Now, we understand the, the staff's concern that you might need to beef up the, the um, critical mass for a PCD application, and maybe there's some other things that need to be tweaking here. And, and we support um, the opportunity to work with staff to do that. And I guess that's what we're asking you. If there are other portions of this text amendment that are, are time sensitive and critical, that you take these, um, these three or four references to the PD zoning district out and give us some time to work with staff to try to find another way uh, to address that situation. Because it doesn't seem to us that you're gonna accomplish your goals and at the same time, you're going to create some, some consequences that I just pointed out to you. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'll just add that the city does not recognize nonconforming zone changes. So that issue is not one that has any relevance to the city. Um, Lynn, can you answer the question with regard to the, the uh, PCD designation and the appropriate uh, zoning? Yes, that is correct. That part of um, the area that he's referencing is designated as PCD, Planned Community Development. However, part of it is also our rural density. Well, the point being the vast majority of property owners in Section 1 will not have a conforming zone change. I'm sorry. Again, I'm, I'm using terms that are incorrect in the city. They will have to file general plan amendments. So in order to come in front of you, you will have multiple general plan amendments for this whole section if you do what you're doing. And you'll give yourself no alternative or properties no alternatives because the way the text amendment is written, there is no potential waiver from that requirement. And there is not a single owner who owns 50 contiguous acres in Section 1. There's not one. So all those that are under 50 acres are going to have to come in with non-conforming zone changes. I'm sorry, or with general, general plan, plan amendment amendments. Requests. Right, so you're, this person's going to come in with RPD2 and this one with you know something different and, and whatever the uh, equivalent general plan category is, clearly that is not what, uh, well I hope, that isn't what you intended. We'll, we'll close the public hearing. Comments or questions from the board? 
If the commission wishes to move forward with this, we'll take out the this section and work on it further so that we can give you appropriate answers. Okay. Well, and just a quick comment. I, I think I could support this a lot a lot easier if if the breakdown 50 acres is kind of just a number out there, but not all sections are 640 acres. If it could be worded such that if it were a nominal 40 acres or a nominal 20 such that if the sectional breakdown were to actually be 19.92 acres just because of the size of the section that a, a nominal 20 or a nominal 40 would work. You don't always get true five acre parcels when you do sectional breakdown. You don't always get true 40 acre parcels because the sections are not exactly 640 40 acres. So you're saying kind of round it? It, it, round it off. I've always been a proponent of, of the word nominal, meaning that if it's a true sectional breakdown and it happens to be 19.92 acres, that the spirit was a nominal 20, 20 acres, acres, and that's right. what you have. So maybe we need to look at that, too. Okay. Any more questions or comments from the board? Vice uh, Chairman my, only, my only comment is I am always somewhat apprehensive about having a rule that, that have, has absolutely no ability to appeal a decision. You know, sometimes the situation might exist where you, you want to grant a waiver and it's the right thing to do. And I, when we go back and take a look at these things, as uh, Director Wheeler suggested, I would hope that you would take that consideration in to give some opportunity for uh, discretion. Thank you. And the inf Chairman, and the information of Mr. Dunham's comments also are, are particularly relevant and we'll take a look at that also. No more questions or comments? We'll entertain a motion on item 38. And that would be, if I may, to delete this section with regard to financial institutions specified and also the references to uh, the PD district. Couldn't have been, said it my better myself, so make a recommendation for approval as uh, adjusted by the director. Motion's on the floor for approval. Please cast your vote. Could we revote, please? She had 37 in a row perfect. Please vote. Commissioner Trisdell, thank you. And that motion has passed. And that goes forward to council in ordinance form. Thank you very much. Citizens participation. Uh, public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. No subject may be acted upon by the Planning Commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium, give your name for the record, the amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Is there anyone like to speak during the public comment section? We'll close the citizens' participation. And uh, this meeting is adjourned, but before we do that, we'd like to wish Director Wheeler a very, very, very happy birthday. Margo. Thank you, thank you. And many more to come. You guys just like the cake. Commissioner Evans will lead us in the song. We, we wanted the Stevie Wonder version, like, happy birthday, Margo. That'll do, that'll do.